and welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Uh, we are playing Blade Runner tonight. We are continuing our Memories of Fire campaign, second second session, second episode. Uh, and uh, I think everyone's in the right place. Yeah, everyone's in the right place. There you go. We did that. Uh, but yeah, we're picking it up. Uh, we've realized that we don't really remember how to play. It's been two weeks. <laughs> we are going over all of everything that we need to remember. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but uh, we've got uh, got a little cosplay, as you can see. Long has uh, Long and I have uh, have have opted out uh, of that, but everybody else seems to be doing something or the other. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun, uh, and we'll see if we can get any further along with the investigation. We ended on I don't know cliffhanger isn't the right word, but I, like we ended on a reveal. We ended on a mm, reveal, right? Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, we'll go from there. So why don't we, let's just dive right in. Oh, actually, no, let's not dive in because I have a little announcement. That's right. Steven, you're supposed to remind me. Come on, man. We are doing a giveaway. Uh, Jeff, you have an announcement. Steven, please don't interrupt me when I'm doing an announcement. Come on, Jeff. Man. <laughs> Jeff, did you remember your announcement? <laughs> Jeff, yeah, I no, have I notes it. that we're supposed to remind you about a giveaway. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. We have a giveaway? We have a giveaway. There it is. This that wasn't planned, as you could probably tell. Uh, we have uh, we have a giveaway tonight. As our, our friends over at Norse Foundry have given us a couple more sets of dice, and so one of them we're giving away tonight uh, during Blade Runner for all you North American folks or people within my my mailing range. Uh, this is the uh, this is a, a Spellbound Thieves box, which is pretty cool because it has extra D sixes. So if one D six just isn't enough for you and you would prefer four in your, in your pack, which I would prefer, you know, you get it right in here. We're not going to give it now. Cause if we give it now, then you'll leave. Uh, so we'll do it about, ha about midway through and probably about an hour or so. And we'll, we'll do the, the usual, like say something and then you'll, uh, uh, and you'll get it. Uh, my trait. Yes, of course. I'm going to, I, I have committed to Canada, uh, yeah, I've also been watching a lot of Letter Kenny recently, and I'm assuming that's exactly what Canadian culture is. Uh, so, how are you now? <laughs> Good, and you? I've been doing it all week. It's crazy. Good, and you? Oh, not so bad. <laughs> so Pitter anyway. Patter. Pitter patter. Yeah, pitter patter. Oh my goodness, it's so good. I just assumed that's what it is. I was going to ask Matt last night when we were playing Octane Cthulhu, but I totally forgot. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Why don't we dive in then? Actually, for real this time, let's do a little intros. To, uh, I'm not going to do, we're not going to do these all the time, but since it's only the second second session, why don't we go ahead and uh, reintroduce the characters that we met last week. So tell us a little something about your character. Something new, you know, something new. Something uh, maybe... If you're unsure of what to give us, uh, maybe something like why or how you got involved with the LAPD or the Blade Runner unit to begin with, or maybe some sort of recent trouble or experience that's uh, been preoccupying you, uh, something like that. Uh, so uh, let's see. Let's do like, I'll do, should we just do by order? Just force Derek to go first. Should we just do that? Let's just force Derek to go first. I've read his, his little backstory. I think he's ready to go. So Derek, tell us about Edward Maxwell. Yeah, uh, so Everett Maxwell has been a Blade Runner for about seven years now. So not the uh, the vet of the force, but tried and true. Been around the block quite a while. Um, he's very social, very charismatic. You know, he'll buy you a drink, he'll buy you noodles, um, but it's just as easy for him to pull the trigger if he needs to. Doesn't want to, but he's got a job to do. Uh, something that's happened to him recently is, uh, he has a neighbor who he's kind of always looked out for in his apartment complex. And, uh, he thinks that they're hiding something. Uh, she, his neighbor let, uh, Everett into her apartment once, but got super weird and defensive, uh, when Everett got too close to a painting that was hanging up. Um, even though Everett was just admiring it. So he's kind of suspicious of that. And that was a couple of weeks before we got called out to this, uh, warehouse fire. Very nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. I wrote that down. Uh, so hopefully what we're going to try to get into at some point, hopefully tonight, the downtime rules. And so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll meet the neighbor or maybe we'll do something else. We'll talk about those when we get to there. Uh, but that sounds really cool and mysterious. Uh, speaking of cool and mysterious, Ashley, tell us about Faye Harcrow. Uh, Faye's been on the force for about three years now. So she's one of the younger ones here. And um, she has an old friend uh, Warwick Foxwell and normally they're constantly talking to each other keeping in contact checking in and she hasn't heard from him for a few days now and it's, it's starting to 
get concerning. Okay. Okay. Uh, dear friend, is a is it an LAPD friend or somebody outside the force, or is it just someone who in the same same He's neighborhood outside the force, but they grew up together? Okay. Cool. cool. So lifelong friend, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, maybe not. You know, life to now friend. Who knows? You know. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe they were in the fire. We'll see. Uh, next up, next up, bottom row, we've got Lawton Stone. Stephen, tell us about Lawton. Lawton Stone has also been on the force about three years now. And uh, he joined the LAPD because his father was a police officer. And uh, he always idolized his father and wanted to follow in his footsteps. Was his father also like a, like a crime scene guy or like an analyst or something else? Uh, I would say no. His father was not an analyst. He was a little bit more of a, he was probably a patrolman. And, okay. Uh, he wanted Lawton to, to go beyond what he had. Sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. Gotcha. All right. And, uh, and they're not on the force. The father's not on the force anymore. No, Just he passed away. Okay. Right on. You can't use him against me this time, Jeff. I mean, sure I can. <laughs> of course I can. Are you kidding? Yeah. Uh, dream inverter zombies. Zombie. Flashbacks. Yeah. Emotional yeah, damage. There are zombies. And, no, there's not zombies. Uh, and then fine. And then actually, not finally. We have two more people. Arlie is our uh, our, our lone replicant. Uh, Melissa, tell us about Arlie. Uh, yeah. So she is, uh, as noted, a replicant. Um, what we haven't uh, kind of seen about her yet is her key relationship as an informant that goes by the name Shade. Um, so I rolled key relationship as a suspect who is deceitful and their life is in danger. So it sounded like an informant to me. Okay. Okay. Shade, like S S H A D E, like the way it's mm -hmm. normally. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. They, uh, they can pop up. They can pop in. We'll see how it goes. Uh, a lot of you, like these are, you know, there's only so much that I'm, I'm, I'm planning. So a lot of it, I'm like kind of relying on you all to pop some stuff in and we'll see how it goes. Uh, and then finally we have our fixer, uh, who, uh, long, long, is there something about Mr. Freckles with your character? I, I have in my notebook, Mr. Freckles, and I don't know if it was for Mr. Blade Runner or a different Freckles. game. Does that no, make sense? I'm, that makes no sense to me. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why I wrote it down. <laughs> I don't know why it's in my book. <laughs> it's like a fresh notebook. I think it's the Blade Runner notebook. <laughs> Can we have just, that just be like some creeping horror that's like just, just showing up? <laughs> that sounds scary. I, I, I don't know what it is. Anyway. Anyway, uh, Koji's son, Root. Tell us about Koji. Yeah, he's the veteran of the group here. 11 years in the force. He joined the force because he's great at making connections. So all these connections he can make inside the force opens him to connections outside as well. Very nice, very nice. So is he uh, too old for this shit? Is that what you're you're telling us? Yeah, he's tired of all these rookies always screwing things up and me having to fix them for him. Okay, okay, okay. Just try fixing my sound levels here. Okay, so uh, you guys ready to get started then? You good? Good to go? Yeah. All right. So let's do the summary and then we'll we'll dive back in. So uh, we're going to say late in the evening. We're going to say it was, uh, it was September 17th, uh, 2037. Uh, Deputy Chief Holden of the LAPD, your boss, called in five Blade Runners to serve on a, on a priority case, in other words, all of you, because uh, a violent fire broke out at a warehouse for a company called Chemplast Incorporated, which is a subsidy of Wallace Corp. Uh, the, uh, apparently, the, uh, there's, there was an automated fire suppression system, but it failed to trigger, which caused the, the blaze to just kind of burn wild for hours, and it was worsened by whatever chemicals were left in storage. Uh, within the warehouse. The warehouse is in Sector 12 by LAX, etc. Uh, with Wallace Corporation involved, albeit somewhat indirectly, your deputy chief Holden's superiors wanted all hands on deck, and that means you all. So you kind of got in, you were directed to uh, to contact security chief for Chemplast, who was a retired member of the LAPD by the name of Monty Croyle, uh, and you were supposed to investigate the scene in the warehouse district near LAX. But upon arrival... Couldn't find Croyle. No one, no one could find Croyle. But instead, he spoke to a woman by the name of Marilyn Lau, uh, who was one of the one of Ken Plus executives. 
Everett Maxwell, he's your skimmer there. He eventually convinced Lau to provide a full inventory list of what was at the warehouse and also some internal security footage, which we'll cover in a second. You also spoke with German Volch, uh, who is a union rep uh, for various warehouse workers in the area. And you learned that there shouldn't have been any union workers that were on shift that night before the fire broke out. Uh, but he did recommend that maybe you could see Maeve's Bar, uh, which is elsewhere in Sector 12, because there might have been people that were working that were not sanctioned to work there uh, at the time. Uh, so you could potentially be able to coax some information. Uh, inside the warehouse, Lawton Stone, you were taking samples and you were able to find ground zero of the explosion. Uh, and it was an explosion. And you were able to conclude that somehow white phosphorus was involved, whether it was part of like an actual device or whether it was just one of the substances in stock is a little unclear. But it was somehow involved and likely uh, one of the reasons why there was like a, a bright white light that was kind of reported uh, by a few uh, eyewitnesses. Uh, Faye. You discover that the fire suppression systems had been tampered with. Uh, and with that information, you and Everett kind of hooked up as he was looking through the internal security footage. He saw a hooded figure with like these tattooed sleeves up and down his arms that was kind of messing around uh, with that particular uh, that particular system. Arlie, you notice heavy duty uh, industrial change that were like inexplicably for no reasons whatsoever that you can tell wrapped around tightly this vent that was very, very high up in like one of the, one of the detonation areas and the metal of the chain had been part partially kind of corroded or destroyed. Uh, so you went and tried to retrieve them. You fell, you got a couple of them, they fell with you, but you fell. And as luck would have it, you actually fell on top of this, uh, this, this floor plant, uh, panel flipped it over. And it turns out on the on the reverse side was a, a piece of, of graffiti of some kind. This uh, W I like an eyeball, a K, and then up. So it's, it was basically like wake up. Uh, and then finally, Koji, uh, you were working with uh, a neighboring warehouse security guard, and you were able. Uh, it was at like this auto. I think it was a antique automotives warehouse storage next door. So you were working with him for a bit, and you were able to look through their security footage. And it just so happens to kind of catch in the background. You watched as the chains that Arlie had found were kind of being pulled up in the distance through like a couple windows and stuff. Uh, and you were able to kind of do the enhanced thing. And you saw that there was a person and actually multiple people at, at a certain point that were being pulled and hung uh, kind of dangling on these chains. And as you zoomed in, as you enhanced uh, you uh, you were able to recognize the Chemplast security chief and the retired LAPD, Monty Croyle, uh, the very guy you were supposed to come contact. So let's uh, let's pick up. We are let's, let's get a little music going. Uh, we are again. Let's open again. We got that forest of concrete warehouses. It's nighttime. There's a light rain falling. It's very very late, midnightish. Uh, in the distance, we can see like the orange burn of this moon bus that's lifting from LAX and it's kind of quickly dwindling into the dark sky above some sort of red eye and route to an orbital station. Uh, you can pan around. We see the burnt remains of the Chemplast warehouse. You can see Everett, Everett Maxwell huddling with some of the VIPs we already mentioned on the nearby platform inside. We see Lawton and Arlie uh, and Faye uh, that are in various positions around this damaged floor panel with the with the graffiti. But well, we're going to go ahead and pick it up on Koji Sun, who is still in that antique warehouse. We're zooming in on that, that Monte Coriel reveal. And we pull back out and we see as you're watching Koji, he's just dangling there. He's alive. He's not hung by his neck, but hung by his body. And then there's that bright flash of light and he is presumably obliterated in it. And then moments later, everything goes to static. So I'll turn it to you, Long. What do you want to do with Koji? I'm going to transfer this over to the vid phone we have. Send it to the others. Got something. Okay. So with your, you guys all have like your Kias, which are your knowledge integration assistants. Uh, and so each of you would get a quick ping and you can see uh, sort of sent out to all of you this vid file, this clip vid file, we'll say, uh, and you all now see the same thing that Koji just saw. It's not the easiest footage to see, but he's probably sent the enhanced version that is kind of zoomed in. And you can see through relatively grainy footage, but it is it can make an ID, you can make the ID. You have the, you have a, a partial file on Monte Croyle. You see his face. 
Uh, and you can see that he is sort of struggling within these chains. The white light flashes and then everything goes. Um, I'll go ahead and also share with you all. I put some images for the characters in here if you want to keep track of them. Uh, over in the journal section of Foundry, there's a little NPCs list. You can see some pics. So that pops up on your Kias. What do you guys want to do? This information should be reported back uh, to the captain immediately. Was there a body free to report? Uh, so two things, deputy chief is who you report to. And uh, Koji, to answer your question, you, they haven't found a body. You, you Again, Lon, you haven't found bodies. Like you haven't found... Like, but the, you, I would say Lawton, you're probably smart enough to know that like the, the intensity of that blaze was, was Ooh, quite burning. severe. And you can also tell just by looking at the chains that within a certain radius of where something went up, like the chains, you can tell like the metal chains have just been eaten, eaten away, eaten away as if something just ate through the metal. So if anything was hanging on that, it likely got eaten through too. Um, I'm not at the warehouse with Koji Sun though, right? No, you're at the normal. You're at the the, the burn site. Um, when I feel like I have gotten enough samples, uh, I would start heading to the warehouse. But I wouldn't want to leave the burn site if, like, I've I still had more work to do. So, however long that would be. Sure. I mean, you. So it's 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 right across. Like like again, everything's kind of like this big giant concrete grid. And so you're able to get over there without a whole lot of issue uh, if you want. Like if you want to pack up your kit from what you're doing, uh, there are probably other people uh, here as well in addition to you all uh, kind of lower on the yeah, totem pole. Yeah, but I'm the only one that you can count on. Okay. Uh, Still so, waiting yeah. on that coffee from the one guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think he's coming back. Was that Mr. Freckles? No, I don't think so. I think that was <laughs> uh, okay, so you want to go join Koji. What's everybody else doing? Um, Faye would kind of like go find Everett and, um, be like, so what kind of dirt or what kind of shit do you think that guy did to get blown up like that? Well, if it's, uh, anything like happens to us all the time, found something out he shouldn't have found out, stuck his nose somewhere he shouldn't have belonged. Interrupted someone's profits, side profits. Who knows? Any any of those things, all just as likely as the next. Should we go check out his personal residence? See if we can find anything. We can, uh, but and I'm gonna add a add a character. Do we have like badges? Yeah, I mean, you you all you're Blade Runners. Like you can ident you can you can show your ident. Yeah. Is it something that would be able to survive that flare or that? Uh, white phosphorus explosion i mean probably not uh if it was on them like if if what you saw on the vid is accurate like there's there's it's unlikely anything that was on this person is probably still there and he was the only one there i would say like you would all also saw that there were a few other people too in our lead with your chains you can tell he probably wasn't the only victim um but i would say lawton has given the 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 sort of this site a good once over this is the chemplast warehouse this is the main storage facility where like the sort of the detonation happened and you given it a really good once over and haven't been able to find anything amongst the rubble that would correspond to like his belongings yeah then um never would just agree with Faye about going to his residence um also we might or let me, I'll go back into character. I think checking out his places makes sense. Do you think he had a vehicle nearby, maybe? Uh, worth, worth asking around to see. Are there still people that saw the explosion um, in the area? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. they've, uh, nope. like, there's definitely been then others that have created a perimeter uh, but uh, like around, like, but there's plenty of warehouse workers. Like you're not in, like you're in a warehouse district. So really it limits who's going to be here, but yeah, there are people around. Okay. Um, do we have a physical description or 
I'm assuming we can give a physical description of Monty to them, right? And yeah, uh, you like know, Everett's you have basically you have images of him. He's a he's XLAPD, so you have like his old, you know, you have his his image file on it. No problem. Okay, uh, then Everett would just go up to people, ask people in the crowd if they saw um, an individual matching his description walk into the building or nearby uh, in the area. Okay. Um... Go ahead and roll a connections or uh, manipulation, I would say, one of the two, uh, as you try to convince the crowd to talk to you. I'll do manipulation. Okay. Wow. Uh, he <laughs> rolled a, what was that he rolled roll? 2d12s and rolled an 11 and 12, which is effectively four successes. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. So I gave someone a cigarette. All right. So <laughs> you, <laughs> so we'll say without, you know, without hesitation, uh, there are, there are people, no one, no one necessarily witnessed him going into, uh, into the, the warehouse. Uh, but, what they'll do is maybe they'll point to uh, like another landing pad uh, kind of on like a, a kind of catty corner to where the, uh, where the detonation site was where you can see much like the one that you were on with the VIPs. There's a few, um, a few cars up there like flying cars. Uh Oh, we just lost somebody. Uh, we lost Ashley there. Uh, well, hopefully she'll be back in a sec. Uh, but you can see uh, that there was, um, there's like other cars up there and they, and someone kind of points up and they're like, uh, like, yeah, I, I didn't see, uh, I know Monty. Yeah, I know him. Uh, I don't see him. I didn't see him anyway, but that's his, uh, that's his jalopy up there right there. So they kind of points up so you can see his vehicle. Okay. Never. It will take Faye and go in that direction. Okay. So you and Faye head up there. Uh, apologies for the, uh, for the overlay here. We're going to let it hang for a minute just to see if uh, Ashley's able to pop back in without me having to do anything too crazy. Hopefully she'll uh, be right back. Okay. So anybody other than we'll say, don't Arlie hang out. So like, don't not you. We'll say Koji or Lawton just because you're like not on screen right now, Melissa. That's why. So Koji okay. or, or Lawton. Uh, I'd like to set up my uh, CSI kit and uh, try to investigate like specifically the chains to see if they were, uh, burned by white phosphorus too, or if it was some sort of uh, different reactive agent that that ate through them. Uh, just trying to sure. chemically figure out what's going on. Uh, so I would say no role is probably necessary at this point. You can probably put two and two together. Uh, that yeah, whatever, whatever substance, whatever combination of substances has ripped through the walls, ripped through this, whatever had that kind of underlying bit. Uh, of of the the substances you you took samples of same thing, um, I would also say you're probably you're probably smart enough to get maybe some um, some biological residue left over in some places like you don't see like there's nothing in terms of uh, nothing visible but as you do swabs and things like that you can probably and you know and run your your uh, your scanners over it you can probably get what looks like some sort of biological data sort of reinforcing someone was kind of hung from these chains. Uh, I'd like to start running that organic data through like a DNA tester or something like that if I can. Yeah, I think that would come back pretty fast. Uh, again, mainly because you have him on file. You have a lot of his data on file, but it does come back as a match for, uh, for Omani Croyle. Yep. This is some uh, organic dust here. Obviously, white phosphorus, same as the the warehouse, and this is 100% money. So we have visual confirmation. We have DNA confirmation. You gonna work? Set out here then. I'll thank the warehouse security I was talking to. I didn't okay. catch your name. Uh, it's uh Clayton. All right, Clayton. Or no, it's it's, it's Carter. Carter Slayton. Uh. But my friends call me Freckles. Uh, Freckles. It's <laughs> Mr. Freckles to you. It's been a pleasure listening to your stories. If you ever want to talk again, oh, come uh, meet. That sounds like the life will die. I should have you over to dinner. Uh, the missus will be... Well, I don't even remember the voice I used. The missus will be uh, quite delighted to, to meet you. 
Okay. So where do you want to go? So let's talk for a second because we didn't really get into this last time. Shifts, the way this game works. Uh, so, so basically this game, uh, it, there's locations, there's shifts. Uh, we don't really get too heavy into like the travel time uh, unless you're on foot. If you're on foot, you're not like, if you're flying in your spinners, you can get anywhere, no problem. Uh, but you can essentially explore, investigate like a one location per ship. So you guys have all been doing this warehouse location for this ship. So if you decide to leave, uh, so to go somewhere else, like you've mentioned, possibly going to Monty's home, uh, or if there's other leads that you want to follow up, that's essentially, we're going to end this shift and we're going to start a new shift. So after three shifts of being on duty, you need to take a downtime shift. And if you don't, you start accruing stress uh, for each additional shift beyond beyond your third. So uh, so if you're, if you're all done, which I, it, you guys have gotten basically almost everything, uh, and you can almost, you can kind of, well, I mean like Everett's going to go check out the car and everything like that. So, uh, but in terms of like looking at the scene, the, the, the samples and you, you basically gotten everything. Um, so it's just a question of whether or not where, or where you want to go next. I do believe that Arlie was instructed that she needed to do a baseline test. Um, which needs to happen in the shift after it was requested. Yeah, that's right. Cause you were acting kind of squirrely. Uh, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay. And that does take a whole shift. So if you're playing yeah. a replicant, it takes it. Yeah. So that would be mm -hmm. Okay. So Arlie's heading back, uh, to HQ. Uh, that's where she's headed. Uh, Everett, you still want, you and Faye were still checking out the car. Why don't we, why don't we resolve that? And then we'll, and then we'll hit all the locations next. So, um, you get up there. Uh, it's uh, it's a nice. It's it, you can tef definitely tell this is like a company car. Like it's probably provided due to his like security position with Chemplast or in, in probably with Wallscore. Uh, it's much nice. I mean, like you guys all have spinners, like which are very nice to begin with. But you can tell this is more of like a private owned vehicle. Um, but what do you guys want to do up here with it? I'll just check if it's unlocked and try and open the door. It is not. Uh, if you want to try to get in, you can do like a tech to try to, I'll say, break in or like like kind of try to bypass the, the sort of the, the security locks. Or you can just roll a force and try to break your way in. Hey, uh, Faye, I don't suppose you could uh, get this door open. I'm not too good with stuff like this. Oh, I got it. She elbows the window. Okay, go ahead and roll force. Contaminating yeah, he had a bulletproof spinner. Okay, uh, let's see if he does. Oh, I mean, with two successes, I'm going to say he doesn't have... Like, I'm going to say that nice you shot. have either with your fists or with your equipment, you're able to maybe not break the window open, but maybe you... Maybe slide. she's got something where she can, like, yeah, get the window yeah, down. Yeah, you slide it down, and you just break the lock inside the door completely, as opposed yeah. to worrying about the electronics of it. Uh, and you're able to like dislodge the door and bring it over. It'll, it'll get repaired. It could get repaired, but uh, he's, you know, he's dead. Who cares? Uh, so yeah, you got it open uh, and you can see beautiful faux leather interior has this wafting smell of cigar smoke. Uh, and you can tell that the uh, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's even like a scent of cologne kind of maybe coming out from it, but it looks to be very well kept, very neat, very tidy. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. There looks to be like some kind of travel kind of coffee, coffee mug sitting like directly in a console, uh, right behind, right, like right in front of where like he would punch in his cat, you know, his, uh, his coordinates and everything. But first glance looks this super clean, easy. Uh, any personal effects or anything that else that were left behind, like in underneath the seats or sure. anything that's kind of like hidden. Uh, okay. Um, roll observation. One success. That's, that's all you need. All, all you need is really okay. one. Like one is a success. Like one, unless it's like something specific, one's a success. Getting extras on top of it is, uh, adds other things. Uh, okay. So, Okay, you find uh, in, you don't really find anything in terms of like personal effects. There's not like, you know, lucky rabbit's feet or anything like that hanging from a windshield or anything like that. There's there's nothing 
there's not even really a back seat to this thing. It's just a two seater. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as you go through, you do find there is a, um, there is what looks like a matchbook, uh, and a, and a, a, a marker like for a casino marker for happy Jack's casino. I wonder maybe he had some outstanding debts as she holds up the thing to show Everett. Definitely possible, but why string him up in a warehouse that's owned by Wallace Corp? I mean, it's his place of work. He's supposed to keep people safe there. Yeah, that's a good point. Best of the best, and yet he got taken out on his own turf? That's sending some sort of message. Guess off the market down is another place to check up on on top of the bar and some other place I wrote down that I can't remember. Add it to the list. Okay, so now we'll say shift ends. You all kind of split up and you're going... You don't necessarily have to split up, by the way. That's not required, but like you all start going to a new place. So Arlie, you're heading back to HQ to do your baseline. Is anybody else wanting to go back to headquarters? Uh, one of the main reasons for going back to headquarters, other than obviously doing like baselines for that, uh, would be to like access the Esper wall and stuff, which is like slightly better, uh, slightly better like processing power for things. Like if there's certain evidence you want extra like um, analysis on. So there's that. That's a, that's a possibility. There's also resources back at LAPD and everything. So if there's something that pops up. Uh um, yeah, I gave Arlie a ride to the crime scene, so I'll drive her back to headquarters and I'll uh, upload all my samples and everything to the database and all that. Okay, so the two of you are heading to HQ. Uh, Koji, uh, where are you headed? Uh, I know there's Maeve's bar. Was Everett planning to go there? Yeah. Okay, okay. Then I want to find a way... I'm going to head back to Jade's actually because Tattoo was our suspect. I'm going to see if I get some information from her. Okay. Very good. So you're going to head back to your tattoo, like the tattoo parlor that you know well. Okay. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Uh, Faye and Everett then, where do you want to go? What are you thinking, Everett? Everett's going to go to Maze Bar for sure. Okay. How about yeah. you, Faye? Faye, will, she'll drive him over. Okay. So we'll say, I mean, you all are in, you all are in constant contact with each other. The fact that like, cause you're all on LAPD, you all can easily communicate with one another. It's not an issue. Uh, so you could very easily update everybody. Uh, so Everett, you, you, Everett and Faye, you hop into one of the spinners and you start heading over in the direction, uh, of Maeve's bar, which actually is also in sector 12, which is where you're at. It's just sort of on the other side. Uh, Lawton and Arlie, you're both are heading back to LAPD. And then Koji, you're heading. Uh, do you remember which sector you were in for uh, for for Jade's tattoos? I'm just curious. Yeah, I think it was sector one. Okay, so we all start moving. Uh, a couple hours, uh, no no issues. No issues getting to where you want to know. Go, go as long as you're in your spinners, everything's fine. Uh, so we'll start with Koji. Uh, Koji, you head back to sector one. Uh, you want to start kind of questioning your own tattoo artist. So the name was Jade, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you head in, okay. When you head in, you can tell that it's, it's very, very late at night in the sense of like, it's like two o'clock in the morning, but this is in a neighborhood where time is, you know, is different uh, in the sense that like, this is still, this is probably nearing closing time. Uh, but when you, when you get there, there are actually four other people waiting around, uh, one of whom, uh, seems to be in the process of kind of getting some sort of tattoo affixed, uh, to their back. And so they're like laying down, uh, on this platform. Uh, and you can see Jade is kind of leaning over, has this kind of long, it's not just a, it's not, not just a needle, but it's like this long kind of robotic arm that connects to this overhead receptacle that moves about here and there. And in addition to actually like carving into it, it's creating like these like extra like stereoscopic effects, right? So like these these photo these uh, these tattoos have this like kind of weird depth perception thing to them. 
Uh, but when she sees you pop in after having seen you before, she she looks up and she says, um, sorry, uh, sorry, Koji, but uh, last one for the night. I'm uh, going to have to make an appointment. We'll, we'll finish you off some other time. Uh, not a t- tattoo for tonight. If you have a moment when you're done. Um, okay, sure, sure, sure. Uh, and so you go and you like, you know, sit down and you can see that the other people here are just kind of like, they're getting a little kind of drunk. Like you can tell that they're inebriated. They got, they're probably on something kind of being a little, you know, scattered a bit. Um, none of them really kind of look over you and cause any trouble. Uh, but like you get this, like they just reek of like sewer water, uh, and booze and some kind of smoke. Uh, and they get a little, they get a little rowdy all the time. Like when you get, you get to hurry up. Come on already. We've been here for hours now. Come on, let's go. Chop, chop, let's go. And they kind of get up. Like they're kind of, kind of move and stumble over top of each other. Uh, do you, what does Koji do? Uh, is he just kind of let it play out or does he do something? So, so they're friends of like this guy getting a tattoo. That's what it looks them? like. Yeah, and they're just kind of like rushing a bit, but they're getting a little little loud. Maybe I'll use them for a bit. How? What are you guys partying for tonight? What? what? What's that? You celebrating uh, anything? Sure, sure, celebrating. It's my birthday. Yeah, it's my birthday. What'd you get me? Oh. I'll get him a little drink. You get me a drink. Where are you getting yeah, like, a drink from? <laughs> uh, oh, where am I getting a drink? Maybe the parlor's got some stash. The parlor uh, pub. Roll. Uh, okay. How about this? Um, <laughs> roll an roll an insight test. Let's say. See how well you know Jade. See if you, if you know where Jade might hide a little bit of liquor. Okay, my insight's a B with empathy A. Okay. So it's less about seeing it and more about how well have you gotten to know her over the over the time. Successes are six and above, right? Yeah, it should be sixes and above. And then it's like 10, 11, or 12 is a double success. Sweet. I got none. Uh, you can push. <laughs> <laughs> what's you what's can push. pushing you until? So you can push. You just, you just re-roll. Uh, if you roll any ones uh, or unicorns, if you get the special dice, if you're only ones, then you take stress. So you reduce your resolve. Actually, okay. yeah, for, since it's empathy, it would be resolve, stress. I'll push it. Okay. I got a one. Okay, go ahead and reduce resolve. Uh, do you get? Any, did you get any successes? Uh, no, in <laughs> I can't find it. I don't know her that well, I guess. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I would say that your relationship with Jade has been entirely professional, if that's the case. Like you haven't maybe had like late night drinks or anything. She's, she's You've kept their kind of kept each other at, at, at a distance. Uh, and so when you when you kind of start maybe poking around some of the drawers, she's like, what are you doing? Get, get back in your seat, please, or I'm going to ask you to leave. Uh, apologies. I overstepped my boundary. Yes, you did. Now sit. Sure, I'll just you see very stern look on her face. And the guy kind of leans, ah, oh, I thought he says you were getting me a drink for my birthday. And he just kind of leans over top of you, kind of breathing heavily into your face. I sure could use a drink. I will get one when your friend's done. Oh, that's not my friend. No, no. That's my brother. Look at him. You can't oh, see the brother. resemblance? Uh, he was face down. I couldn't tell. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. And so he's just going to kind of like hang over top of you the whole time. Like you can feel him kind of like, like you have you have nice clothes. Koji dresses nicely, right? And yeah. So like you can feel him just sort of like crinkling like your your vest a little bit. Like he's kind of getting your hair a little messed up as he's just leaning over top of you, sweating and spitting into your face. And it's just like this really uncomfortable, like a good half an hour before she's finally done. And she kind of you know, sort of, sort of skirt, you know, shoes him away, kind of exchange their whatever whatever uh, payment is remaining, uh, and we'll say we'll we'll kick over at this point to um, Everett and Faye. I'm sorry, I have to mute my douchebag neighbor who has a very loud motor going right now. Uh, 
Okay, so I can't hear it if it makes you feel better. It doesn't. It makes just I don't want to talk about. It. Uh, so uh, so so we're gonna say Faye and Everett. Uh, you get over to uh, Maeve's bar pretty quickly. Uh, you pop inside, and you it's a, it's definitely when you get there. There's not like places to to park your spinner. Like it's not like a like there's an obvious like like parking spot. So like you just find somewhere along the road to just start lowering the spinner down. Uh, and you can see as you're coming up, it's a very kind of rough and tumble bar. Like you can see it's very late. And so it's probably nearing closing time. And so you see groups of people that are, are leaving. Some are lingering kind of outside. Uh, definitely looks like there was a, maybe a, a like a, a scuffle or an altercation or two. Uh, but as you go inside, uh, there's still, there's still customers are still drinking. Uh, you hear the sounds of like cheering from the far side. Uh, and when you peek over, there's some sort of like, like fight going on, but not but like, like organized fight. Like it's like some sort of like, like boxing match or something. Um, it's very cramped in here though. Like all of the seats and booths and things like that are all just kind of cramped on to one another. Uh, and you can see like all in the walls and on other places, there's like a lot of like this lingering legacy tech here and there. Uh, you can see like, there's like this trivia game system, like at, at the bar here and there. Uh, you can see all along the walls, uh, kind of where, where like the booths are, are sort of affixed to, there's like this huge collective mural of what looks like, uh, like old, old boxing matches, but like bare knuckle types, not like, you know, like actual organized fighting. And it just all the way around, uh, and you hear, and someone just kind of slops down to the ground. Money starts exchanging hands. Um, you see that there are two people that appear to be working behind the bar. Uh, you probably put a woman maybe in her, uh, probably in her late thirties, early forties, uh, very dark skin, uh, kind of, uh, her hair is sort of, is sort of up and wild a bit, uh, and looks like what might even be like a, like a brother or a cousin. They can see like a resemblance in the face, uh, is also kind of working at the bar, kind of wiping it down. looks like they're, they're getting ready to break down for the night, but they haven't been able to get everyone out. Uh, what do you what do you all want to do as you walk in here? Um, Everett will go up to the bartender and just very casually say, "By any chance, you know any of uh, if any of the uh, warehouse boys from the Chemplast warehouse are here tonight, and where I might be able to find them." Uh, okay. So there's sort of two people behind the bar. The one that looks like the bartender, it looks like the guy uh, as he's like kind of doing the classic, like drying out cups and things like that and putting it back up into the racks, like the glasses and things. Uh, whereas the woman seems to be kind of working some of the tech, like going through like the register, the till, that kind of thing. Uh, and he kind of looks up at you and he looks, you know, kind of takes you in up and down, kind of looks down. He sort of sees Faye as well and he just says nope okay and what would it take to jog your memory oh it's not about forgetting anything I just I just don't know you don't overhear any conversations see any people wearing the same kind of get up no I'm a Real busy fella here. I got a lot of people to uh, pour drinks for and things. So, uh, can't say I did. All right. Do you know someone here who knows who's who? Nope. Okay. You're real helpful. I'll turn to the woman and ask her the same question. Okay. Uh, and she'll kind of sigh. <sighs> she sort of like smacks him with a, like that's the classic like towel whip the shell man go go clean off go clean off the tables back there and he just kind of gives you a dirty look grabs like this tray and starts walking uh and like you sidle up next to her and she just uh she just looks you up and down this ain't your kind of bar you probably shouldn't be in here oh i've got my my friend back here she can take care of me if anyone tries to give me the old fisticuff or whatever yeah. you call it around here. She looks over over your shoulder, over towards Faye. Faye, what are you doing as you come in here? 
uh, face kind of standing in the background. She's clearly interested in the fighting. Um, but she's sure. just kind of standing there and she's got her like arms folded. So her biceps are kind of bulging a little bit more than normal. And uh, yeah, she's just looking tough, but she's also really paying attention to like the fighting, but she's got Everett like on her radar. Uh, roll an observation test then if you're keeping an eye on the fighting and whatnot. What does that mean? Uh, so you got a unicorn. Got a, and a uh, success. And a success. The unicorn shouldn't matter unless you're Oh, because I didn't push. Pushing. Yeah, it. So okay. you're you're okay. You still got a success. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can see there's two dudes, uh, probably each over six feet. Uh, both of them look uh, pretty thick guys. Uh, none of them are, and neither of them look particularly... Uh, uh, particularly weak and they're just the fight they're having is very kind of old fashioned. Like there's like, you can see someone comes up, draws a line in the, in the ground. Like, like they just get a, and like it starts to glow and then they kind of come up to it and they stand on either side and they just start doing like the old fashioned, uh, kind of like holding their, their fists up. And eventually it kind of devolves into a more, uh, more brawly type fight, but they're just kind of punching around. They get kind of thrown into the crowd crowd kind of pushes them back in and they start fighting some more. Um, you notice like that there's like, there's money exchanging hands for sure. Uh, but you can also tell, uh, like one of them is wearing what looks like some kind of belt, like some sort of like almost like a prize belt around, uh, around their waist here and there. They're bare chested. They're greasy, kind of hairy looking. Uh, but, uh, but that is what you see. Um, she's going to approach the guy with like the belt. Oh, no, no, no. He's fighting. Oh, he's, he's fighting. He's, Just kidding. Yeah, he's in the fight. Um, yeah. <laughs> Excuse gonna, me. Boom. Sorry. I, I thought he was like sitting down. Um, she's she's going to integrate herself into the crowd a little bit more. And um, she's going to, whoever's next to her, just so so who's who's the one to, to bet on? Okay. So you sidle up and someone's like kind of watching. And they're like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's five to one on Jonesy. And he points towards towards Jonesy. Jonesy is the one with the belt, uh, and this guy over here, he did, uh, I don't know who he is. Some new kid. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, come on, quickly, quickly before the before the new round. Let's go, let's go. And you can see they kind of like split off, and they're like all kind of bleeding here and there, and they're getting like little shots of water uh, from other people in their corner, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It's like if mm-hmm. you want it, get in now. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'll I'll, I'll watch around. I'll watch around. Probably gonna be over and around. And he kind of looks over towards you at that point, kind of gives you a look. Why oh, you're here? Everything's legal, everything's on the up and up. We have our licenses, everything's fine. No reason oh, for you to start any oh, problems. Yeah. I'm I'm not here for problems. Uh did did you any of y'all catch that fire that happened? Kind of looks at you, kind of strange. Yeah, we've been here tonight. We had nothing to do with it. No, we're just none of your boys that you know are missing or anything. Come on, Josie. No, no, no. No one's missing. No one's missing. Come on, come on, come on. Stop, stop. I'm trying to watch. I'm trying to watch. And he's just sort of like waving you off, waving yeah, you yeah, off yeah. here and there. Uh, back at the back at the bar, Everett, uh, you lean over, kind of talking to this woman, and she's uh, she's sort of going through her her register and she stuff. You can't uh, you can't come in here and just. Listen, he doesn't uh, he doesn't like cops. None of us do. Uh, none of us really like cops around here. So uh, ask your questions and get out of here. I don't want any trouble. All right. I just want to go home. It's tired. I don't want to clean up the blood of uh, one of you people off the ground. Oh, that's very considerate of you. I feel touched. Uh, no, I'm just here to, to find some warehouse workers. We had a fire that happened, trying to understand why they were working when they shouldn't have been. Maybe they can help us find out who put the who started the fire. I'm not interested in anything else in here. Uh, I don't know nothing about a fire. Uh, I mean, everyone here, I mean, they're all workers one way or the other. You know, some of them on, some of them in unions, some of them on the table, you know, whatever they can get. Uh, I mean, if they were on, then there's certainly none of them are 
Didn't see anyone coming in with singed clothes or anything like that, if that's what you're asking. Do you know any of the uh, the union boys who might work for that chem blast warehouse? Have any of them here I can bother instead of bothering you? Uh, I mean, yeah, I know a few people, but uh, it wouldn't really do good for me for business if I am seen giving over names and such and kind of causing a little cramp in people's style to, you know, folks like yourself. Uh, go ahead and roll. Everett, let's see how you do. Uh, it's for like a manipulation or something. See if you can win her over a bit. Yeah, and he'll say, you know, if those names ended up on a napkin my drink was on, there'd be no knowing who it came from. And he'll roll his uh, manipulation test. Okay. Oh, such good rolls from Derek tonight. I'm yeah. You jinx it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I waited till after. <laughs> um. So she kind of looks, kind of scratches her head. Like, well, I guess you're going to have to order something now, aren't you? I'll order two somethings. One for me and one for my friend over there watching the fights. She kind of looks over. All right. All right. She kind of turns back. And, like, you can tell, like, she's kind of considering because, like, you know, the other guy just cleaned all the stuff. So she's pulling off these, these, these glasses and stuff. And she starts pulling up. She kind of slides over. And she says, uh, she leans in. She's like, uh, guy in the corner over there. That's Gavin. Uh, he's uh, second, you know, to uh, to a Monty, Monty Croyle, uh, union rep, that kind of thing. Yeah, he knows a little bit of everybody, if you know what I mean. And you look over and you can see a guy, and he's just sort of leaning back on a, on a stool in the corner. He's got the, that band of mural, the box and stuff behind him. And he's just kind of watching over at the fight, kind of like wincing with certain swings and things like that. All right. Let's, uh, let's kick over then, uh, to HQ. Uh, we'll start with Lawton. Lawton, uh, you get here. We know where Arlie's going. She's going to, she's going to do her baseline. Lawton, what are you doing while you're here? Uh, paperwork, uh, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I want to take all the samples, all the tests that I've done, upload them, uh, see if I can get any sort of further results or at least get them uploaded into the database, make sure everything's organized properly. Okay. All right. Is there anything, uh, is there anything particular you're looking for? Or are you just kind of doing like just uploading uh, everything, see what it can find? Upload everything. I want to try to do some research on the white phosphorus. Maybe we could source where it came from, uh, find uh, places that uh, provide it. Uh, I don't know if there are different uh, chemical signatures to like different types of white phosphorus that you can see where it came from, where I don't know if it was mined or whatever. I don't know anything about it. Uh, yeah, uh, specifically white phosphorus, but also just paperwork. Okay. Uh, we'll say, yeah, we'll say you, you kind of get your samples uploaded. You start getting on the network. You start going through these different images. You start going through, uh, the inventory list that you're given, uh, from Marilyn Lau of Chemplasts. Uh, I'll say if you want, um, you can roll tech. We'll say if you want to just try to like dig through it all see if there's anything all right uh, yeah. intelligence tech right yeah that is um an eight and a nine so i believe that is uh two, two successes that's correct okay so from what you can tell, it's quite possible Kim Plass actually had some of this uh, in the in their inventory. Uh, however, uh, you do actually notice that there are some kind of curious, sort of anomalous, like radiation readings and stuff. Like there's certain things that suggest, like you're as you're going through uh, some of um, some of like the sampling that you took of that kind of flipped over uh, that flipped over panel. Like there's there's something about that that's giving off this kind of strange um, strange. Uh, basically, it looks like something that wouldn't be 
would be out of place there as if somebody either like coded it or, uh, or kind of imbued it or just uh, kind of put something on top of it maybe and just sort of infected it with like some sort of radiation signature uh, that you would put with your two successes. It's got to be something that would probably be out in the Kipple uh, or maybe something down in like the San Diego Wastes or something like that. Uh, something that wouldn't would have probably been scavenged and brought away if, you know, it, it wouldn't wouldn't be anywhere near the city at all. Uh, so it's likely something oh, that what somebody, is the kipple? So the kipple is basically like this. It's like the X. It's like the outskirts, essentially, of like L.A., where it's just like these huge, like giant trash cities uh, where like uh, where like scavengers will kind of pick through things. And sometimes like the the big old trash barges will come and lift it up and go dump it down in San Diego. It's uh, gotcha. kind of like off to the east of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's it's like that's kind of like right on the edge of like the eastern blocks with like like in the direction of like Vegas and whatnot, where like some of the radiation is too heavy. And then but something was brought and kind of rested there or like this piece of metal was brought from there. Something like that suggests that uh, it, it's it's out of place. There's nothing else like any other this other basic scans that you did. You're not getting that kind of radiation signature from anywhere else. Anything you've you sort of scanned. Uh, so they're definitely a, sending a message trying to draw us somewhere. I'd like to focus on that radiation signature, uh, see if I can isolate what element caused it. And if so, could I trace like what part of the kipple it could be from that kind of thing? Uh, I just want to enhance, enhance I, my results. I hear you. You're asking, you're asking really great questions. Uh, wonderful <laughs> questions yeah. that we will learn the answers to shortly uh, as we go over to Arlie. So I have time <laughs> to think of what the answers to those questions are. Uh, enhance, okay. Jeff. <laughs> enhance, enhance. Okay, so Arlie, you get, uh, you get, you have to go into this. Like we, you know, if you all have seen twenty forty nine, you get this like white room. Uh, you kind of sit down. There's this camera in the wall. Uh, there's just, it's a bare room with a singular chair, uh, right in the middle. Uh, what does Arlie look like right now? Like, what is she wearing again? Uh, so Arlie, uh, is always kind of in black and white. And so she has, uh, a white sort of vinyl, uh, coat that she's wearing. Um, and kind of her clothes under that are, are black. Okay. And so she sits down and sits you know, upright. Okay. So you sit for like a minute or two and it's just utter silence and you're just kind of staring ahead. Like there is like a, it's a relatively blank room other than this like kind of sort of ocular display uh, on, on one side that you're kind of staring into. And you see after a couple minutes, like this, uh, like this, this sort of lens suddenly like lift up and focus and you hear like a crackling of a mic. Uh, and you hear, uh, you hear a voice come in, familiar voice, one of your superiors, not necessarily one of the deputy chiefs, but somebody uh, that you'd be familiar with. You hear the voice kind of pop in, um, and you just hear, uh, "What's your what's your full name? Like, remember what's what's your actual uh, like designation?" Uh, I I, I know. Go by R. R. Do you? Yeah, it's R R. Probably some sort of serial number, right? Did you put that uh, down? I can make something up. Okay. Uh, R921. R-921. Okay. So you hear like on the, on the comm, like uh, R291 baseline. And then like you like kind of sit up and then you hear uh, like the voice crackle a bit. And then you hear like a very familiar kind of exchange starts to happen. So again, this is, this is something from 2049. You hear the, like this poem start being recited to a very familiar poem. You know mm -hmm. it, you know, it. you know what you're supposed to do. You hear, uh, did you see it drifting all night on the Black River? On the Black River. Did you see it in the morning rising into the silvery air? Into the silvery air. An arm full of white blossoms. An arm full of white blossoms. A perfect commotion of silk and linen as it leaned into the bondage of its wings. Bondage of its wings. A snow bank, a bank of lilies biting in the air with its black beak. Its black beak. Did you hear it flooding and whistling? A shrill, a shrill dark music like the rain pelting the trees. Like the rain pelting the like trees. Like a waterfall knifing down the black ledges. The black ledges. And did you see it finally just under the clouds, a white cross streaming across the sky? A white cross streaming across the sky. Its feet like black leaves. Like black leaves. Its wings like the stretching light of the river. And did you feel it in your heart? In your heart. 
how it pertained to everything and have you two finally figured out what beauty is for. What beauty is for. And have you changed your life? Have you changed your life? And you hear like a, like a buzz, a beep, and you hear the lock on the door behind you open up. And you hear like the voice come up again, baseline met. Thank you, the door sir. Opens up. Good hunting, Arlie. Thank you, sir. We cut back and we see Koji. That was amazing. We see Koji uh, finally free of his drunken compatriots. It's just you and Jade. Uh, you can see she's cleaning up a bit. Uh, and she's like, can we make this quick? It's late. Yeah, I've been working. This, if you recognize this is all, I'll show her a picture. This artwork. I've seen it before. Okay. Uh, it's not mine. It's not mine. I didn't do it. Um, what's it for? It's, it's for work. I know it's for work. I know what you do. What's it for? I don't want to get people jammed up. Uh, I need to know who this is. I don't know who that is. I know whose work that is, but I don't know who, who that is. Like like you're showing work is it in trouble? I just want to talk to them. So are you showing the still image of the um of the the catch from the guy working on like um sabotaging the fire suppressant systems? Yeah, the possible suspect with the tattoos. Okay. Um all right. So she takes a look at it, uh, and turns her head to the side. This can't come back to me. You know, you don't, I don't. They're a friend. Like we That's all, right. we all kind of know each other. They have, she does good work. I'll make an you, appointment. You promise. I don't want, I don't want this blown back on me. I don't want this blown back on her. I'll never know. And so she kind of moves over to like one of her, uh, like her display case. She kind of pulls up, looks like a cigarette. She lights it and she kind of pulls out like a, a card. Like you can tell that it's got this like extra kind of 3D effect on it. And she hands it over to you. Uh, and you see like this, it's like a business card, but it has like these little extra like effects causing like the sort of 3D image bending. Uh, and it says the ink tank, uh, it's sector one entertainment district, red lights, not that, not too far. I mean, like it's in, you know, it's in this, I think you are in sector one, uh, and you can say, and, and you can see like, as you're moving, like the tank kind of fills and then empties and then fills and then empties and then fills and then empties. And she says, uh, Jade says, ask for Baumao, but don't tell her I sent you. Don't tell her. Don't show your, she like looks at your arms, roll your sleeves up. She'll know. I promise. Okay. When are you coming in to finish? The next downshift. Okay. Can I leave now? It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm tired. Thanks for your time. All right. So she leads you to the door, opens it up. Little bell goes off. Not a real one, but like a digital one. She closes the door. You look back. All the lights kind of go off. And you just see this sort of like subtle glow on the inside. You can see her kind of shadow kind of moving back to the back of the building. She might live nearby. She might live above. You're not really sure. So why don't, uh, as I look at the time, it's been an hour. We're about an hour in, about halfway through. So why don't we stop briefly because we got a giveaway to do. Is that right? Hey. Yeah. All right. Let's do a giveaway. Doesn't everybody want to be a replicant now so that they could find a fun Seriously. The whole time she's doing this, I'm like, damn, why didn't I pick a replicant? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I enjoy having a soul. Oh, I, I don't have a soul wow. in real life, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> no. Wow. Shade. Giveaway time. Damn. So. One thing that I did want to get to uh, as we're getting back, um, just from a technical perspective, since we're kind of like 
trying out the rules. Um, when replicants do baseline tests, there's actually a role that goes along with it. Oh. And so depending on whether you, you. Um, succeed or fail the role, things happen. Um, and so I succeeded on the role, which means that I get a promotion point. If I fail, there's like a couple of chances. Um, and then you could actually end up retired if you, you know, fail too many of those retired. tests. So um, mm-hmm. retired it'd actually be really interesting because you get a verbal warning on like the first failure. And then if you don't succeed and then you fail another one, then you have to go um, and get um, recalibrated. Um which actually heals all your stress, but reduces your resolve. And if you fail the third one in a row, you are retired. That's funny because we uh, rescued somebody from being recalibrated in a different universe. Didn't we, work out for them. We did. Nothing we really worked out for anybody in that universe. <laughs> 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 Nothing really worked out for anybody. I had a hard uh, time in that universe. <laughs> which one of you? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Steven kept killing you. Oh, right. one we're time about, one we're time mothership game all right let's get back into it okay so koji you finished up your shift arlie you have finished up your shift um lawton we're going to come to you uh you are specifically trying to narrow down where in the kipple uh that you could have found it um hmm. i also wanted to know exactly what element caused the radiation symbol did you get that yet I did get it, but you needed three successes for it, and you oh, only damn. got two on your roll, unfortunately. That's fair. So That's fair. That's fair. Give you that information. Uh, so the problem with the Kipple is that is is like a really you can actually I think it's on the map we have here. Where is it? Is it on the map? It's all the way like to the south there, or southeast, something like that. But it's all the way on the edge. Um, this is what I would say if you. You can't necessarily narrow it down from here, but what I would say is if you are able to go there, if you decide to go there at some point uh, and you try to do basic scanning, you would probably have like a signature that you could potentially use to scout for, uh, if that makes sense. Okay. So yeah, just keep absolutely. that in your back, the back, your, your back, the back pocket, back pocket, back your back mind. pocket of my brain, the back pocket of your brain. Yeah. File okay. that away in the back. The very last your wrinkle in your brain. <laughs> All right. My brain's um, smooth. <laughs> All right. That's so then awful. finally, so like Lawton, Arley, your shift is done uh, as you have continued to do your things. Uh, and then we'll go back to Everett and Faye who have been at Maeve's bar. Okay. Um. So Everett, you have been directed to a guy named Gavin who is said to be sort of second in command to Monty Croyle. Uh, for the un- or, excuse me, uh, second in command to uh, to German German Volch uh, for the um, for the Union rep, uh, and then you, Faye, you've been talking with this one guy who's kind of been pulling in uh, pulling in various bets for this this bar fight. So, what are the two of you doing now? We'll say as the fight is still going on, and they're just like they're at like like you can tell like their faces are just smashed in, beat in. It's, it's pretty terrible, but they're all standing. Um, Everett will grab the drink um, and then head over to Faye and hand it to her. And then he'll sit down and nonchalantly just mention, got a name for uh, someone we could uh, ask some questions. Uh, Bart, one of the owners, said their name is Gavin. Uh, I was thinking of calling one of our friends, seeing if they're at HQ still and getting some information. Maybe we could just meet Gavin at his place. If they, the owners want to be to keep them out of this since this is not a very cop friendly area um or we could just wait outside tail them act like creeps i don't care what do you think uh, yeah we could you could call and get that information and then we'll meet him there okay i'll do that okay so you don't want to approach gavin in the bar here you want to like try to Okay. We're going to try and yeah. respect their request okay. to keep it separate from the bar. Okay. Uh, so at a certain point, as you all are drinking, uh, a couple a couple people in the crowd uh, kind of move over in your direction. They start crowding you. And they're like, uh, you know, it's big, big dudes. Woman kind of gets up in your face and she says, uh, you know, we don't like your kind here. 
We don't want you here. You don't help us here. I think it's time for you to go. Uh, I'm enjoying my beverage. And if it means anything, uh, I, I don't like my kind either. So we're, we're on the same page, you know. She smacks the drink out of your hand. She just smacks it right in the hand. And the, the, the glass goes down to the ground, shatters. You hear like everyone kind of stop for a minute, kind of look over in your direction. No, that's interesting. I was I was just thinking of doing that. Did you know like some crazy old culture used to throw their glass on the ground as like a revelry? Interesting, isn't it? You did that for me. Are we celebrating something? See her, she reaches down, she picks up like a shard of the glass. She kind of holds it up. Now these things cut almost as good as knives do. I guess it depends on who's faster. Okay. Uh, if she swings at him, face swinging. Yeah. So okay. Um, well, you. What we'll, we'll do. So we'll do. We'll do initiative. We'll do. Let's do. Do like a normal initiative here. Um, Ooh. Because we're again, we're trying to just sort of figure some stuff out. Uh, let's see. Did you guys gonna... get in a bar fight? Yeah. <laughs> I was just enjoying my beverage. Sure. So we'll do, yeah, we'll do initiative. There's three of them. Uh, okay. And yeah, so the way initiative works is so it's like, it's like a, you know, a free league game. There's like the deck of cards, uh, but the way it works in foundry is that it's more of a, like they do like a D10 roll and they add some decimals and stuff. So let's roll this stuff. Okay. So, uh, all right, so it's supposed to go from I think lowest to lowest to, to fastest, but it's backwards here for some reason. Uh, okay, so one of so she's basically faster. So she got a one, uh, and then Everett, you're gonna go second with a three. Uh, then one of the other street hustlers will go after you. Then Faye, and then one of the other folks here. So like that's essentially gonna be the order. So she's going to uh, with. As quick as quick as she can, she's just going to sort of lunge out uh, with this uh, with this piece of glass and essentially kind of just try to cut you like right in the face. She's just going to try to like slash you right in the face. Um, so this is like hand to hand. So this is a hand to hand strength. Oh my god, she's got terrible stats. Why did I do this? This is uh, <laughs> that's okay. I'm not a I'm not a melee fighter, so it's going to be like two <laughs> stick figures slapping each other or something. Right. <laughs> I appreciate that uh, that imagery. Okay. <laughs> All right. So she's going to go ahead. Uh, Melissa, you got the combat rules up? Or should I? Or uh, Melissa, uh, Ashley and everybody looking else. Looking at them. Okay. Yeah, I've got so, the document. So you guys. Okay. So good. So you can see all the different actions and things that you can do. All right. <laughs> so uh this is going to be so she, you guys are engaged there's different engage ranges like engage zones so like she's right up on you uh so they're going to use hand-to-hand combat uh because it's basically just going to slash it's not like a real i don't think it's a real hand i'm just going to call it that um and we'll see how it goes so she's her strength is a okay strength is b it's pretty good it's pretty good and then a C for her hand to hand. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So I did get an eight. So one success. Uh, as she slashes out uh with this uh with this glass, trying to kind of just cut you right on the right in the cheek a bit. Uh it will they're not contested, right, Melissa? You you looked this up, did you? Uh sorry, Lee. Uh where'd it go? I had it. Yeah, I think it's just one point. Yeah, one point of damage will do. So you take, so she reaches out and she slashes you in the face and you get one point of damage and she just kind of cuts your cheek at this point. Uh, okay, so then next up, it would be you, Everett, uh, as you are the next on the list. 
And you said that we are in. Um, You're engaged. The minimum rate. Okay, yeah, engaged. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think he'll just try and go for, I guess, like intimidation with his firearm. So if I were to like take a like a take a back step, with, do they, is this like opportunity attacks and stuff in this? Uh, technically, I think there are opportunity attacks. Uh, so like, um, uh, free attacks. You need to make a mobility yeah. roll. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have to take a mobility roll to step back, uh, without like kind of taking a hit from anybody else. All right. Well, I got a B in agility, but a D in mobility. We'll see what happens, I guess. But he'll okay. basically try and just intimidate her down with like just drawing his, his, uh, firearm. Oh, lucky. Okay, so you manage to, as she's, as like she's coming, she slashes you with the cheek and then she swings. Uh, it is, a, okay, so it is an opposer. I thought it was an opposer. Um, yeah, sorry, I just had to find it again. Yeah, go ahead, Everett, before you, before we resolve your mobility to step back. Uh, I thought it was uh, opposed. So you actually also get to roll your strength hand to hand and see how well you do. And the winner is whoever, whoever wins, even if it's the defender, actually does the damage. So she's coming at you with, uh, gotcha. with this like piece of shard. And so you get, you do get the roll defense. Okay. And that is my defense. I did not pass. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you, so everything's fine. You still take the one point of damage as you did. As she did get one success. You got zero. Then you pass your mobility test. You step back, you brandish the weapon. You have that up. Uh, so we'll say manipulation, I think, as you're trying to intimidate. Uh, I mm -hmm. think that's okay. So go ahead and roll it. Tell us what you say. Um, I'll say with the gun, uh, go ahead and take an advantage on this. Okay. So he'll say, so he'll, man, I want to quote Thanos so bad, but he'll touch his cheek and, you know, while he's holding the, the, or the, not the rifle, the firearm up and look at the blood and say, okay, you're faster than me, but I think I've got you here. And he just holds the, uh, the weapon up. Ooh. Okay. Tale of two cities. Okay. Uh, so you've got it up. You can see that she, as she's going in for like a second swing, she kind of, she kind of puts her hands up at this point. She sees the gun up. She kind of like kind of starts kind of shaking her head and this like horrible fit of disappointment. Like you're like, you know, everyone else is throwing fisticuffs. You're pulling a gun in this bar and you hear it back up. Oh, look at this big guy, huh? Look at this big guy with his big gun. Look at him. And everyone's just sort of like, like calling from the, like, no one's scared. Like you see, like no one's like hiding around like that, but like more, they're kind of like yelling out, like teasing at this point, like, Oh, big guy, big gun here. Too afraid to get his, get his hands wet. Is he too afraid? Huh? I want to oh, actually, throwing? she got her. She got my hands wet by hitting my drink out of my hand, but I appreciate your concern. And he's like, you know, bowing to everybody and like lay it on. And then he just turns and walks out of the, uh, out of the bar. Okay. So the other two, like they, everyone just got their hands up at that point. Hands up, hands up. What do you do, Faye? Um, Faye's gonna look at Everett and she's gonna be like, "What? You weren't gonna bet on me?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kind of spent my money tonight on drinks. Sorry, Faye. All right. Well, I guess I'm going. And she turns and she looks at the lady and she's like. Have fun when Mr. Volt hears about this bullshit. And then she leaves. Okay. Uh, so you guys back out of this bar. Uh, and you can see as you're leaving Everett, the woman at the, the kind of the owner of the bar, she's just sort of shaking her head at you uh, at this. And she's got like her hand on her head like this. Um, and you notice that uh, as you go outside, uh, there's a little bit of a crowd uh, kind of that is formed around your spinner. Uh, and when you start walking over, you see like spray, like whether it's spray or whether it's, it's some sort of sludge or mud, you're not really sure, but it's kind of been kind of messed up a bit. You can tell like, like there's sort of like stripes that have been kind of thrown in with like either bits of, uh, bits of, uh, of paint or someone just kind of thrown what looks like, uh, like a streak of mud across the windshield a bit. It's like, it's, it's functional, but they've just kind of screwed mm -hmm. around with it. And you see as like as you guys are starting to come up close, they just start bolting and running off in different directions at that point. I knew I should have bought the built in electrification system to shock the shit out of people to mess with this. <laughs> that's the that's the Batmobile, man. Okay. Should have could have would have. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, this was 
halfway point. List. I mean, you really weren't gonna bet on me. You had to pull out a gun. I uh, look. I don't work out. I smoke too much. Uh, I just wanted to defuse the situation. And she's faster with glass, but bullets are faster than glass. You know, you know, light up a cigarette. Okay. Uh, so and if that's Faye's the case, gonna be a little bit pouty as we're driving away. <laughs> like, so we're taking the off. makeup runs a little. Yeah. So we'll say uh, we'll I say next time. next shift is basically early in the morning, like early a.m. Uh, so where is everyone heading for you? This is like basically your third shift in a row. So after this shift, you would probably go into downtime. But where would everyone be heading next? Because at this point, everyone's kind of transitioning here. So Arlie wants to spend some time um, digging up some information on this wake up tag that was graffitied. So that's kind of the lead that she wants to follow up with. Um, And so I'm not sure if that might still be kind of back at headquarters, uh, kind of trying to see like if this has been like in connection with any other uh, like crimes that have committed or anything like that. But basically she wants to follow up on the, the wake up tag. Okay. Uh, so if you want to do that, that like if you want to stay at headquarters and try to like go through as much, you know, like if you want to go through other like case files and things like that, see if anything pops. Okay. Others, what I'm else not, are you doing? I'm gonna offer my be- I'm gonna offer my yeah. lead to the others because if anyone wants a tattoo, because I can't have this coming back to me. Uh, my body is a temple. I'm a meathead, I'll do it. A Shirley Temple? Uh, okay. <laughs> As I eat another Twinkie. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Arlie staying at headquarters. Faye, you're going to go follow up on this lead that Koji got with uh, with the ink tank and uh, a tattoo. tattoo artist named Bal Mal. You don't have to get a tattoo. <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> <Just> a tattoo. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so then, uh, what else? So Koji, did you have a, in mind what you want to do then? If you're not, are you going to follow, are you going to go with her or are you just going to uh, do something else? No, if no one's gone to Croyle's home yet. No, they maybe haven't. follow up on that. Cool. Okay. So you're going to head the, you're going to head the money Croyle's, uh, then Lawton and Everett or the, were the two you headed. Would I be able to assist Arlie with the wake up sign? Um, because I feel like we're getting a lot of calling cards and they're probably related somehow, like the, the radiation from the Kipler and the, the sign. Someone obviously is leaving a trail for us. Yeah. I'd like to see how it's all related. Okay. Uh, sure. Sure. Uh, so if you two, so you just remain at headquarters, basically too, you just stay at headquarters for the, for the I got more ship. work to do. Yeah. Uh, and then Everett, what are you doing? Um, if there was enough time, would he have been able to phone in to anybody once we got in our spinner to get Gavin's like address or something so he can yeah, that's not a talk to Gavin? Yeah, so then yeah. he'll go and talk to Gavin at his address or where he thinks he'll be. Okay, so you're going to pop in like early in the morning. You just saw him at the thing, at the at the fight, at the bar, uh, and then you're going to try to catch him like early morning hours. Okay, um, so let's start. It's been a while since Long has gotten to talk. So why don't we go with Koji first? Uh, So Koji, you are able to find uh, Monty Croyle's um, uh, address. Now, he does not, even though he's former LAPD, uh, you find that he doesn't actually live uh, in the same sort. He doesn't, he no longer lives within the dormitories, right? He's no longer there. Um, Instead, he's in, he's in sector nine, actually. Uh, So it's, um, it's normally a fairly, it's like a kind of a mega rich uh, area, but there are some kind of lower sort of uh, lower, lower levels. So he's, he's at a fairly low level within a very large spire that goes up about 400, uh, 400 levels. Uh, he's kind of sitting at around 150 or so, uh, but it's just sort of this, um, this kind of pretty, pretty well to do uh, kind of a por- apartment condominium. Uh, kind of overlooking what looks like the fashion district. Uh, so it's kind of like the new money uh, of, uh, of of L.A. Um, when you get there, it's not like trying to get into like a normal LAPD, uh, LAPD like blockhouse. 
Uh, so you're, you actually have to like kind of, there's a little bit of a process is like you, you, you land on a certain level, like there's like security you have to bypass, but because you've got your blade runner badges and everything like that. And because like, this is specifically approved from the top, you kind of get greased in. So like we see like a little montage of you kind of going through talking to this guy, going through that scanner, going through this security sweep. And then finally you eventually uh, get into uh, Monty Croyle's home. When you look around, uh, you can tell that he lives alone. Uh, there's nobody else. Uh, there's nobody else here. There's no signs of anybody else here. Uh, and you can tell that the the, the apartment itself uh, is probably about three times the size of kind of a standard uh, L.A. cop uh, cop room. So he's probably been making much better money, uh, judging judging from the the location and from the size of this. You can see that there's kind of like a kind of like a living area uh, with what almost looks like sort of old school, like faux old school kind of like leather lounge furniture. Uh, it's not real leather, obviously it's faux. Um, and you can see like he's got this whole one side of the wall is sort of set up as his vid screen that kind of throws things to. Uh, everything is kind of chrome and glass in terms of like tables and things here and there. Uh, it's a relatively clean place. Uh, you don't really notice anything. It doesn't like kind of stand out in any particular way, uh, but you pop in. What do you want to do when you're here? I'm going to look around, see if he's got anything laying out in the open. Maybe he's working on something. Left it open. Personal devices hanging around. Okay. So I would say without having the role, you, if you're looking for personal devices, there is a private terminal. So you can see he does have his own personal terminal uh, in his kind of bedroom you can see where his bed is sort of sprawled out uh that is probably the only thing that looks a little messy uh and it's not so much messy as if you know it's just, it just hasn't been perfectly made uh but he does have a desk that over that kind of looks out this window uh and you can see the lights of the city below you can see some of the other spires uh and the mega rich you know these mega rich spires uh here and there uh these huge like uh, advertisements kind of sweeping along the sides, almost like looking down at the at the street level, so that whenever everyone looks up, they're kind of getting they're kind of getting the reverse view. Uh, it's almost dizzying in terms of like the height. It's almost like a vertigo effect as you look down. Uh, but there is a private terminal on this kind of glass and chrome desk of his. Uh, if you would like to access it, uh, this would probably be a tech roll. Okay, I have a C in the. Okay. Rolled a six and eight, so two eyeballs. Okay. Uh, okay, so you pop in, uh, and you can see that he's got, you know, he's, you could you can probably, with, with that, with two successes, easily kind of get into, like, his messages, some of his, like, kind of recent, his recent messages that he's got. Most of it is looks to be business-oriented. He's got this Chem, Chem Plus kind of connectivity account. So everything's kind of coming to him, seems to be coming from others. Marilyn Lau, the woman you had met before, seems to be popping in. Uh, there's communication with German, uh, with German Vulch as well. Uh, you can tell that most everything kind of looks kind of on the up and up. Um, when you start kind of digging a little further in, you notice that there are also some private messages. Uh, you can see that there are, uh, he seems to kind of dabble a bit in, uh, some women of the night. Uh, as you can tell, he has like this kind of a repeat regular kind of bill that kind of pops up every now and then. Uh, and, he also, this is this, and this a name kind of pops out to you again. Uh, it's something that Everett and Faye found. Uh, as you see that he's got these, uh, he's got markers out at Happy Jack's Casino. Uh, pops up again. Let him know if Happy Jack's. Uh, and then you got two successes, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then as you're going through his messages, you do find one other message that seems to kind of come through. Uh, and it looks just like the, the image that Lawton and Arlie discovered, like on the underside of that, um, uh, of that, that panel, it's that kind of that wake up thing. Uh, and there's no, like, it looks like it's been like the message has been somehow obscured. Like they've, they've, they've tried to kind of clean up the sender. It's so like, no one knows where it's actually coming from. But there is a kind of like a text file that goes along with the image, uh, and just and it just says, 
I know what you did. You're going to burn for this, just like they did. And that's it. Ooh. Ooh. Go ahead and upload this. Let everybody know. Okay. Yeah. And again, you guys have your Kias. You can easily communicate with one another. That's not an issue ever. Okay. We'll cut then and we'll say as that message is going out, uh, it's going to say be popping up on uh, sort of Lot and Stone and Arley who are probably in a, a lab somewhere uh, at the LAPD headquarters. And both of you see that message pop up. Maybe he even forwards the actual messages to you mm-hmm. uh, as you guys are kind of going through uh, various uh, uh, databases. Mr. L- Mr. Lawton Stone, uh, is there... Call me Lawton or call me Mr. Stone. Lawton Stone. That, Mr. Lawton Stone. That's, that's too much. Uh, y- yes, yes, Mr. Mr. Lawton, Mr. Stone. Uh, I, I wonder if there are... We could cross-reference um, other fires that have happened uh, recently that might have uh, preceded this message. Broaden our uh, search criteria a bit. I mean, there's a terminal over there. I'm not your boss. Well. Use the far one on the far side of the room. I I am already quite deep into the uh, wake up search. I thought uh, Mr. Lawton, Mr. Stone. Oh, you're trying to be my boss and telling me what to do. Well, I, uh, yes, I, 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 I see how this is uh, going to, to go. And so she now has uh, two terminals. So she is going to have the search that she already had going on for, um, the wake up and now she's going to start a second search on a second terminal and she's just going to be going back and forth uh, between the two trying to uh, find All right, you, you look weird moving between computers just fire just stay on the one I'll do this one uh, yes uh, Mr. Lawton Mr. Stone malicious compliance I hate it I love it so I'll, I'll start looking into the arsonist like she suggested uh cross-referencing different fires and stuff like that okay uh go ahead roll a tech uh and then melissa what are you actually doing as as arlie what are you doing Uh, i was looking into the the wake up so it might be a similar okay all right gotcha Okay, so um, go ahead and give me the give me that roll there, Lot and Stone, and I guess Arlie, you would probably do the same thing if you're both just sort of. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. What is advantage? Is that just boosting a die up? Rolling an extra dice, uh, and then taking the better of I think it's your base dice. I get advantage on tech rolls that require knowledge of physics, biology, geology, forensics, or other natural science. That wouldn't really apply to cross referencing, would it? I don't think so. I don't think that's that's the case here. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and uh, advantage is a third dice equal to of same size as your lower dice. As the lower die, okay. Yep. Uh, that is a uh, failure. It was a one and a four for Arlie. Okay. A uh, single success for me. You gonna push it? Push. <laughs> Mr. Lawton, Mr. Stone, I yep. appear to have downloaded a virus on the terminal. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! No, it's, it's Scout again. It's oh, Scout. That's me. Oh, no. oh no! Oh my god! Our Shadowrun game. Uh, uh, okay, it's the same I've... background. Shadowrun background right now. <laughs> I am going to try pushing and see what happens, just to see what fun can occur. All right. Super virus. That's Remember, a success, and it did not get one. The one. You can't re-roll the one though, because you said you got a roll a one, right? Oh, yeah. When you push, you can only re-roll a die that does not have a one on it. And you are automatically, because you already rolled a one, going to be taking uh, taking stress. Oh. Because you, yeah. Jeff, you just broke your wife's heart on <laughs> live <laughs> internet. The first time. I didn't know that was a thing. I apologize. <laughs> uh, so, re- so if you're pushing, go ahead and re-roll the die 
that didn't show okay. a one initially. That's the one that I got the six on. Isn't that interesting? It is a fact. A replicant wouldn't <laughs> lie, Jeff. <laughs> So go ahead and take She just passed her baseline. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. Did she? Or maybe okay. Uh one point of stress. Uh so take okay. one point of stress. Which comes and, off of uh, resolve, right? Yeah, it comes off, okay. come, uh, off of resolve. Okay. So both of you have one successes, is that right? Uh yes, I do believe. Uh we both had a success. Uh Okay, so as you're kind of digging through old case files for arson or anything related to wake up, um, you see, you would say, okay, first of all, ars- you would you would actually probably have to come together at a certain point uh, as you realize that both of you make it to sort of the same case file. Uh, mm-hmm. It's probably about five years old, uh, so it's like 2032 or so. Uh, and I found the case file first, though, and it it involved uh, a Nexus Eight uh, model, which is uh, the model before yours, Arlie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you start going through some of the case files, and it was just a straight up murder. Uh, and maybe that's why it took a little longer to find, is because it was like it wasn't so much focused in the arson. But about five years ago, uh, apparently, a Nexus Eight seems to have seem was a uh, like it was sort of put in record uh, that they essentially set somebody ablaze, uh, and when you when you kind of go through the um, the files themselves, uh, you do find that like the they have pictures of the actual Nexus Eight model. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the Nexus Eight model was found, was retired, no issue. Uh, the officer was Monty Croyle. So you can see that he was actually on the case file. Uh, and you also notice that like, as you're going through like the pictures of the retired model, like they stripped down, no clothes, there's markings all over. And it's not just like wounds, but also you can see like there's like barcodes and tattoos and all sorts of things. Uh, and you can see one of them is what looks like a tattoo that kind of goes across sort of like the chest. It's upside down. Uh, and it's almost like when the person would look down, like at their stomach, they would be able to see that wake up tattoo kind of looking back up at them from like their stomach. Oh. Uh, but they, uh, they apparently killed. Uh, so there were, there's two names. There's two, there's two uh, LAPD names in the case file. One of whom is Monty Croyle. Uh, the other one is a name, um, Hoyt Zemke, uh, who files suggest is still on the force, though is on a leave of absence currently. When you kind of go to see if they're on current active duty, like if they're on right now, not they're on like medical leave. Apparently they work in the gang in narcotics division. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, and the, the victim, uh, was apparently, uh, another LAPD member. Uh, by the name of uh, of May Jai. When, tell me about the process here. When a a replicant is retired, is it possible that that could have been faked by a shady cop, or like would the body be like? processed by multiple people where it would go through a lot of hoops like that would there would be a thing. very much be a uh, an archive trail for for the destruction because like retiring of next especially next right, you know, nexus right. eight models which you know um there would be a trail uh and i would say since you're both working on this and you're taking a whole shift that trail seems like everything seems to check all the boxes that you would expect it to check Okay, so like you can see apprehend, you know, the date of apprehension. You see like the actual images of stuff of like the body on the ground. The 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 um, the guy was actually shot down. Like the uh, the actual model of itself, the Nexus Eight, uh, was shot down. It appears uh, in the warehouse district. In fact, it was kind of shot down, dead. Nowhere near any of the places that you visited. Just happens to be in the warehouse district near LAX. Very very close to LAX, actually, the spaceport. 
Um, you have pictures of all the crime scenes. Everything's there. You can see the body splayed out. You can see the body back at, you know, at like an analyst table, like your own, as if like a, like a postmortem, just kind of going through it. Additional. That's where all these extra photos of them being stripped gotcha. down, yeah. and then into sort of like the deconstruction chamber where they're just sort of like pull them apart for for parts and things like that. And all of that is all of that tracks out. Signatures are there. You even probably recognize some of the the people. It's only five years ago. There's people that you would probably recognize. Everything seems to check out. Did we get a name for that replicant or? Uh, a, so like the only name that's recorded uh, is Bit Fiend. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's sort of an odd name. Seems more like a handle than a name. But they're just referred mm -hmm. to as Bit Fiend. It does appear that we have discovered a very strong motive for this this murder it would appear and so arlie you know obviously we'll we'll share all this information back out to to everyone else um you know kind of with the the tattoo and 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 that connection and faye will like after all this stuff faye is going to message you back and she's going to be like wait 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 so monty supposedly lit this may on fire and then blamed it on the replicant and then retired him well, that that seems a bit like a a uh, conclusion that we're we're jumping to, um, but it it could be possible. That's what it looks like, at least. If he is being blamed for it, um, it 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 could it could possibly uh, look like that. Hmm. But I, you know, we should make sure that we have thoroughly investigated before we come to any particular conclusion. Sounds like yeah, we, we better make follow. sure Hoyt's alive. Follow up with Hoyt Zemke, but let's be honest. Anyone named Hoyt isn't going to be much of a threat. It's the Magi that that worries me. Yes, he was the victim. They're dead, Mister Lawton. Yes, it's like she says your name as if she does not consider <laughs> Lawton to be that much better of a name than Hoyt. When so Faye Ma catches Magi, on, by the way, is uh, is, a, is a woman. It's M E I. Uh, yeah, so it's Ma not yeah. not the replicant that was retired, right? No, bit fiend. Uh, bit fiend is only is the only name that that that, so, that that model went by. Magi could still be alive. I'd like to do some more digging on her. She's dead. So yeah, she, she was dead? the victim. She yeah. was the one that was burned. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still want to do some digging on her. I, I, Lawton, Mister Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy that Mr. Lawton, Mr. Stone is catching on. <laughs> okay. So we will cut away from the two of you for a bit as we'll, we'll since, since Ashley was just talking, we'll cut over to Faye. Faye, you've been in, so you, you've worked your way over to sector one entertainment district, red light district. It's, it's, you probably have to kind of wait around for a bit uh, as mm -hmm. the tank doesn't open first thing, but probably by mid morning, mid shift, uh, ink tank does actually open You're one of the first to actually go inside. Uh, when you get inside, it's a very sterile looking place uh, and it's empty. Uh, meaning mm -hmm. like there's just like, there's not much here. There's like a couple very, uh, very, very basic chairs. Like as you, as you come in like this little kind of bench that extends beyond the, the whole place is extraordinary. Like they, it's almost smells like you're in a hospital. Uh, and you can see that the tile, like there's these hexagonal tiles that extend all throughout the floor on the walls and everything is like kind of bright white and illuminated. Um, but as you start moving through, you can see when you, when you pass by one of these tiles, whether it's the ground or whether it's the ceiling or whether it's the wall, you can see like this holographic kind of projection comes out and sort of shows like past work starts to display here and there, like white, right in your face, these sort mm -hmm. of like custom ads for like what you might be interested in they're doing like quick body scans and they're kind of showing certain images transported like right onto like uh like your arm or your mm -hmm. face or something like that uh you can see uh that there in addition to just like uh tattoos like there's other things you can see that there's like various piercings there's cosmetic aug augmentations uh and there's like custom and like bespoke jobs and stuff 
you can see there's a handful of like these these r well hidden cameras, but you have an eye for it. You're a cop. You kind of look around. You can kind of see the corners and stuff, like little security cameras and things here and there. Um, and as you kind of step through, coming out from like the back, you see a tall, slender woman, uh, very very narrow. Uh, very narrow face. You can tell she's got these kind of like piercings that seem to sort of glow, this like holographic color that just seems to sort of shift and move in a pattern. And she looks at you, she stares you up and down. She's probably about half a head taller than you. Uh, she's very, very tall. Uh, and she kind of looks out and looks down. I don't have an appointment for you today. Uh, are you looking to make one? Uh, yeah, I was also, am I able to just do a quick consultation with you? Consultation for, we don't uh, repair others' jobs, if that's what no. you're after. Piercings, uh, see what would look best, get your opinion. That would be an appointment you would have to, have to make. Okay. We are, uh, we are highly sought after here. I have... I have jobs and clientele today that I must consult with. So I can see what's available in my appointment book if you prefer. Uh, yes, please. So she goes through and like you can see she's like nothing this week, nothing next week, nothing three weeks. Like mm -hmm. she's just she's just booked up. You look around. No one in here. Yeah. There's no one in here. There's like enough room for maybe two people to sit. And as you look around, you realize you don't actually see any sort of tattooing equipment or piercing equipment. It's all, it almost looks like a showroom, right? Like this yeah. like empty showroom. Now she came around from the back, but that's about it. Uh, and she looks at October 22nd at 11 a.m. Shall I put your name down, Miss? Uh, Harcrow. Harcrow, yes. Consultation for piercings, I see. Yes. Okay. Uh, and does she have a name tag on or anything? No, not at all. Um, she is before, dressed in extra, like an uh, extraordinarily elegant gown, uh, uh -huh. kind of wrapped around in sort of almost like a kimono like fashion. And it's got this, like the, the, like this robe itself as it like crosses over her chest. Like you can tell it's somewhat reflective in its own right. Like these golds and yellow and, and reds, uh, as they kind of sweep down. And you can see, like, as you're looking at it, like, there's sort of subtle movements in the pattern. Uh, but no, no, she hasn't given you her name. She hasn't. No, Do I like recognize it. her as Mao Bao or because uh, I would like to have done some research before, like while I was waiting for it to open? Uh, sure. I would say, well, let's see. Would she actually have? Hang on. Let me see if she would actually be have a criminal yeah. record. If she doesn't have a criminal record, probably not. Yeah, there's nothing nothing popped up in terms of a criminal record. You don't have anything. Uh, if you it's not roll, on like social media or anything, uh, it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, you can Got roll it. a tech roll if you want to see if she's popped up at any point with in a way that's not like a like a criminal record. So we can say during the first half if you're kind of sh shooting through. I got one success. Okay, uh, you would probably find a old like. Uh, not, not too old, actually. You would probably find um, sort of a newspaper uh, article that is not advertising her works, but references her. You see this image uh, at a very like grand ballroom. Uh, there are what looks to be very, um, very kind of elegant gowns and tuxedos and stuff. It's a it's a very grand affair. Uh, and you can see she's sort of like mingling with some other folks uh, here and there. And, a, and the article is specifically um, about like like a kind of an art family. Uh, mm -hmm. And like it's referencing her work uh, as like the main woman, this woman, Portia Kiani, is sort of like the the figure that this article is about, like this, this sort of upscale, uh, upscale woman. Uh, but it's referencing like the work that's been done to her. And you can see like these augmentations on her face and... Off in the corner is Bao Mao, and it is the woman you're speaking to. So Faye will bring that up, and she's like, I, I'm a little starstruck, to be honest. I've been a huge fan of your work ever since 
I saw the article on Portia. Uh, roll. Okay. So if you're trying to like ingratiate yourself, um, roll manipulation test, but take a disadvantage die actually for this. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. You did notice I'm, very distinctly that she was not like, this is like the only thing you found of her. Yeah. So you kind of, as you mentioned that, as you let that out, you kind of get the sense like, oh, maybe she's the type of person who likes privacy or something yeah. like that. Do you want to push? Uh, yeah, I'll try it. Okay. Still fail. Okay. So she just kind of <laughs> grimaces a bit. You can see like a subtle grimace kind of come over her face. Uh, and she says, my work is custom and bespoke. If you're looking for a cheap knockoff of Miss Keoni's work, I'm afraid you'll have to find another parlor. Mine is not going to stoop to such repetition, redundancy. Oh, and I she would... starts to erase your, she, like you can see she starts to swipe and kind of delete your appointment from the book. Yeah. She's like, I would, I would, I would never ask for a, re a replica from you. I, I wouldn't stunt your artistry that way. Um, I was hoping um, to ask you a few questions. You've already asked me a few? Regarding uh, my work. She kind of looks you up and down at this point. What do you dress like? Cause like, I know, like, yeah, I know you have so, the makeup on. So I'm like thinking like, this is what you like, your, 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 your cock so looks like. she has, yeah. So she's got on like crazy jewel toned eyeshadow, um, sure. dark lipstick. And, but she's like clothing wise, she's wearing more of like streetwear, um, yeah. like tech wear kind of thing. Okay. So she's got like a tactical bag across her shoulder, kind of like jogger pants, uh, these big, huge, la like heavy lace up boots. Do you flash a badge? Like, do you flash like ID at that point? Um, since she's already erased my appointment, this is the point where she does pull out her, her badge. Okay. And she just, this is not how I wanted to start my day. What is it I can do for you, officer? Um, and then that's when she'll pull out the image of the guy with the tattoos on the security footage. Okay. Um, I recognized your art, um, and I was hoping you could help me identify this man for some questioning. Okay. She takes a look. Um, she studies it, and then she kind of pushes pushes it back to you, pushes like because you probably have your key out either in your hand or on your arm, and mm -hmm. she kind of just pushes it back to you. And she says, I'm very sorry. I've never seen this before in my life. Uh, but you can roll an insight check on that, I would say. Okay. My empathy is... You can do this. Roll better. You can do yeah. it. <laughs> you got this. Two successes. There you okay. go. She is absolutely lying. Uh, and you can tell that right when you showed it to her, there was a mm -hmm. sense of immediate recognition in her face. Uh, but also you can tell like there was for the first time, like she's got this kind of graceful nature to you or to her, excuse me. And like, she sort of stumbles a bit in a way, like she kind of like fumbles like a word or she like her hand kind of like shakes slightly. Uh, but you can tell that she is not telling the truth uh, that she not only recognizes the work, but with that extra success, you might think that she knows more than what she's letting on. Okay. Um, considering this is like such a showroom and, and Faye knows that there's cameras and stuff around, she's going to slip, um, bow like a business card, like a way to contact her, um, and kind of drop her voice. Uh, sorry to interrupt your morning like this, but if you do recall anything, please reach out. She says... And she repeats, and you can tell she's lying to you. And I will tell you with two successes, it's not, she's not afraid of the cameras. They're her, mm -hmm. it's her shop. Like mm -hmm. she just doesn't want to, it's, it's you she doesn't want to say anything to. 
So like you giving her the card and leaving, she'll take it, but you're not getting the sense that she's going to suddenly call you and volunteer information. Right. Why don't you mm -hmm. think on that? We'll come back. I'm okay. going to think on it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like one of those situations where like she's clearly lying to you and like, you know, so if you want to, there's something more you want to do. Uh, let's see, let's kick over to Everett who Everett, you're going to this guy, Gavin's apartment. Uh, so not too far from the warehouse district, uh, in sector 12, uh, kind of on the West section of, we'll say like sector nine or so, like on kind of on the outskirts there, commercial, like kind of near the commercial district. Um, you find him, uh, and do you get there before he, he stumbles back from the bar or do you wait for him? Like, are you there waiting for him? Um, Nah, that might put him well. Yeah, because I don't want him to just tell me to go away. So even if it might put him on the defensive, I'll just be hanging outside, leaning against the building, smoking as I do. Okay, so so you're hanging out, you're smoking. You see him kind of start going up, you know, kind of going into the entrance into the building. You recognize him from the bar. He starts going inside the building. Do you follow him? Do you interrupt him? What do you want to do? Yeah, uh, Everett will interrupt him and he'll say, he'll like call out and he'll say, uh, Gavin, you want to come join me for a smoke, perhaps? Uh, need your help. Looks over at you, he's like, I know you. You're familiar. Yeah, yeah, German Volch sent me, you know. German? Jerry? Jerry sent you? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah what about him? Uh, so, I don't know. Have you heard that there is a fire at the Chemplast? Oh, yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible news. Good thing, uh, yeah, I heard, uh, I heard no one, uh, no one got hurt, right? Like, uh, did no one on shift, right? Is he being, uh, can I roll insight to see if he's being sincere? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, the information that we had is that no union workers were supposed to be there. Right, so yeah. Uh, two success. Yeah, I mean, he's drunk and a little sloppy, but you're not getting the sense that he's being deceitful here. Like, he's not okay. like, yeah. He's like, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Terrible thing, you know, it's dangerous, but could have been worse. Good thing it wasn't early in the day, you know. Whew. So you don't, you haven't heard then, uh, there were guys in that warehouse working off the off the books, it sounds like. I'm no. trying to figure out. No, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. No, 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 no. Off the books? No, no, no. No way Jerry would let that happen. No way. He's the one who sent me to go looking, figuring out who was there that day. Someone, some of, there were people working. I guess I could, uh, did the camera, any of the camera footage, did we get any camera footage that showed people going in? You, you did have people going in, but you did have also, I think, people coming out. The only people you saw kind of, the only thing people that you could confirm were in there when the explosion happened were a, a couple folks who were being hung by those chains that Koji found on the camera, on the camera feed. Okay. Uh, I don't think there'd be any problem showing them. So um, Everett will pull out his Kia and he'll be like, you mind if I show you something? It's going to be kind of unsettling, but I need to know if you recognize any of these people. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Play and it. Everett will show him that specific part and see and ask him, you know, anyone? His eyes go like really wide and he's like, What just happened? What the hell? That did they did they just explode? That's what we've got so far. We're trying to figure out who that was there, was why money. they were there. I could tell that big old white haired fool over there that's that would that look like Monty Croyle. I mean he ain't a he ain't a worker, but like we know him, you know. He's a security guy, you know, he's a good guy. Only cop I ever met that I didn't want to punch in the face. Yeah. I, and present company excluded, of course. No offense taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Monty. Wow. This. You ever talk with him much? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, he hangs out at the bar a little bit here and there. You know, 
We uh we hit the machines a couple times, the Happy Jacks. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. You know, he 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 rubs elbows with the you know, the fancy corporate folks now, but you know, he's uh underneath it all, he's salt of the earth, you know? You know? Frankie, Did he ever was, talk with I, you? About? Did he ever talk with you about any debts, any problems with people? If a likable guy, I imagine he can't have any enemies. Problems with people? Enemies? Well, I mean, he's a cop, so, you know, you probably got your fair share. And, you know, every now and then he works up a debt at, at Happy Jack's, but, like, he, we, we pay it off. It, it's up and down. You know, it's up and down. But I think he was on the up recently, actually, now that I think about it. There's that one guy they got in that fight, uh, that fist fight there. Yeah, 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 that one guy. Oh, what the hell was his name? Let me think. Oh, I drank too much. And he kind of starts, you see him start to wobble. I'm like, oh, what the hell was his name? Something short. Oh, Ty. Yeah, that's his name. That's his name. Yeah, he works. Uh, yeah, he he's a moonlighter. He does. Uh, he yeah. He he sometimes does warehouse work. You know, on the on the morning shifts, and then uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, bouncer. Yeah, he's a bouncer over at Happy. That's what it was. He's a bouncer at Happy Jacks. He was off. It wasn't even. It wasn't even his shift. I you know Monty can drink a little, but I didn't think he was that. Uh, that allowed that night and the two of them like they kind of wanted like he came up kind of got in his face a little and then like you know kind of kind of went off in the corner and then you know I didn't really hear everything they were saying but it was man it was uh, it got violent it got violent a couple shoves and punches but uh, but they went to separate ways after that uh how often are you able to find this uh, tie at Happy Jack's? Specific days by any chance? No, uh, I don't really know about that. I know he hasn't been showing up for his shifts. I know that for like a week now. He's just not shift. You know, he's missed all his shifts, which is okay. We got plenty of guys who'll step in and take him, but you know, he keeps missing them. You know, he's gonna he's gonna lose membership. I know he, uh, you know, he he used to fight too at uh, at Maves. You know, he do the, yeah, he uh, he won one of them actually. They had this tournament couple couple months back. Yeah, he can swing. That's why I was worried because Monty, you know, he's a tough guy, but he like he's like he's pushing seventy. Ain't no way he's gonna win against against a guy like that. You know, what are you gonna do? Does he live nearby in this sector, or is he? Oh, Monty? Oh, yeah. No, no, Monty. Ty. Oh, Ty? Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see if he knows where Ty might live. Okay. Nine. Um, okay. He says, I, I'm not really sure. You know, I don't know him too well. I'm trying to think. I don't have his... You know, I might actually hang on one second. And he kind of like feels it, pulls out like his own little device. He starts, I, could, I might have his card. One second. He's, they got, they got a register. And he starts swiping through and he starts swiping through and he starts. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, here it is. Uh, yeah. He's in, uh, he's in, oh yeah. He's in the South end red light district by the one-on-one stack. Oh God. That's a shit neighborhood. That is not that point. No wonder he's pissed off all the time. Oh my god! So yeah, Sector One Entertainment District, uh, Red Light District specifically, South End by the One Hundred and One Stack. Sweet. Um, I think that's about everything I can ask for. So um, Everett will be like, we'll just say. Uh, I appreciate your time. So early in the morning, you want a bowl of noodles or something? To help you. Oh God, no, right? no, 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 no! Yeah, I won't be able to keep it down. I gotta. Right, well. I just gotta ride this one out, buddy. You know what I mean? Just gotta ride it out. Oh, it's gonna be a rough day. It's gonna be a rough day. All right. Well, I appreciate right. your time, Gavin. Get some rest. Thanks, man. He goes to slap you on the on the shoulder. 
but he misses because he's drunk and he kind of catches you on the chin accidentally. He's like, oh, shit. Sorry, man. Don't arrest me. No worries. You're fine. Get get to bed. Okay. He turns around and he starts walking away. Don't arrest me. All right. Uh, okay. Who haven't we gone to recently? Uh, Koji, you were, you were at the, um, you were at the apartment of Monty Croyle. Is there anything you wanted to, else you wanted to do? You went through his, you went through his, uh, his messages on his private terminals or anything else you wanted to do? I'll take a look around things out of the ordinary. Uh, okay. Anything, um, so you already... I mean, the uh, furniture seems to be intact. Everything seems to be all right. Um, there's nothing in it that really seems to kind of, kind of, yeah, nothing really stands out. I would say uh, you could roll if you want, like an observation test, maybe. All right, have a D in this. Got a nine on my intelligence, though. Okay. Uh, as you're looking around, uh, you notice actually uh, that, despite it's it's a fairly clean, you know, fairly clean, well kept place. Uh, it's kind of got this sort of like old school feel to it with its like leather furniture and stuff, but then it's got this kind of new school kind of chrome and glass. And as you're looking around, like you keep like moving past like this one corner, like where you've got this like fake hanging plant. And when you pass by it one time, you look up and you notice there's a device and you can see like, it's, it's sort of like kind of hidden in this, this pot uh, where the plant is, you can pull it down and it's just some sort of, some sort of like a little spy camera, some sort of cheapo thing. It's nothing as fancy as LAPD would have or anything like that, but it's just some sort of kind of, kind of cheap, kind of buy it from a, you know, from a market dealer, probably a hundred of these, you know, you can, you can probably find a hundred different folks kind of selling this kind of thing. And it's just kind of there. It seems to sort of piggyback a signal. Uh, you're, I would roll over your tech roll from before, since you passed when you were kind of, uh, when you were kind of going through things, it's the type of thing that could piggyback a signal to kind of a, a, a close by, uh, kind of a close by recept, you know, receptacle. Like meaning if somebody were, I, were looking at this, they would have to be relatively close because uh, it's not like a like this anywhere. It's called a track know. bound nearby or it's like unknown. Uh, you, what do you mean you want to try? You said you said you want to try to track like track down nearby. Yeah. Um, It doesn't look like it's it's like currently active right now. It's like the type of thing that probably if someone was kind of close, they could kind of trigger it on and then they can kind mm. of trigger it off. It's as if someone was like was like maybe checking if he was home or if somebody wanted to like see if he had left that kind of thing. If it's just a cheapo generic thing, I can't really like trace it back anywhere. Uh, you could probably trace it, but the problem is is that there's so like, it's like it's like a dime a dozen type of thing. Right. It's 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 not a fancy piece of gear. It's there's no there's like no like LAPD serial numbers on it that you would be able to. Sort of like like go back to where the original sender was. It's probably been repurposed a couple times, uh, so it's unlikely. Um, the kind of thing that like we could connect to though, just to see if like anybody else goes there. Possibly, like you might be able to. I mean, likely what what might happen is like it was like it could possibly like be recording. It could possibly be a live feed. You're not really sure if it's like or if it's like downloading feeds or something like that. It's the type of thing if you plugged it into the Esper network, you might be able to see if there's anything on it, that kind of thing. Mm. All right, I can bring it in or send it in. Okay. All right. Other than uh, that, I think I'm done at the apartment. Okay, so you clean up, get your stuff. Uh, and that's actually the end of third shift for you. Uh, so that'll be it for you. And we'll, we'll talk about whether we want to do downtown in a minute. Uh, Arlie and Lawton, uh, was there anything you two, anything else you tell you two are doing in terms of your research here, uh, around HQ? Yeah. Um, I'd like to go full analyst mode on Magi, the victim reasons that she might've been burned. 
on Monty Croyle and Hoyt Zemke. Was that his name? Um, sure. I want to look at anything ever published specifically by them, but also about them. So like Monty Croyle, even like his retirement party, if he gave a speech, you know, I'd like to go through that. Any resumes I can find on them. I really just want to build up a picture of what their personalities were like, their goals were like, any political views they had. I just want to get a sense of who they were as people and what their motivations might be. All right. Let's do, uh, I would say, if you're looking specifically to learn about the people, I mean, we actually probably can make that an insight test as you're like going, because the information is not necessarily difficult to find, but sort of learning something from it, like trying to like get the psychology and tying these people together might be more of like a, like a, a psychology type of thing. Um, so if you want to roll that, uh, yeah, I would say roll an insight test. All right. Double tens on that. And that is only one success. Um, I'll go ahead and push. Still only one success, but no ones. Okay. So you are able to get, first of all, you could tell that they, they did actually work together, um, in a counterterrorism bureau. Uh, and that from what you can tell, they were on, uh, they were on a, a, a task force that, um, that involved that sort of like overlapped with some Blade Runner activity, uh, mainly because it was sort of potentially dealing with like the replicant underground. The details are a little bit spotty uh, and you can tell that a lot of those files about whatever for like task force that was have been kind of like redacted or they've been sort of, you can't access them essentially. Uh, but they were, they were part of counterterrorism bureau overlapping with, uh, with the repli- replicant detect unit. Um, the other thing you would be able to get, uh, is that Hoyt Zemke has, not been has not had a particularly good career uh since then uh and actually doesn't has never really had a very good career to begin with uh and you learn that he's actually on medical leave uh where just a couple days ago apparently he got his he just got just obliterated by by somebody like in an alleyway uh no one like no one really there's not a whole lot of details about it uh but there were some eyewitnesses that describe a uh, like the uh, more of a, more of someone shouting, "I know what you did! I know what you did!" Uh, and not really kind of getting a good look at the person, but they do like it's kind of like the classic, oh, you know, kind of a large guy, you know, had a hood on stuff, uh, you know, looks like a you know looks like a like a fighter type, you know, he's got some. Uh, some some tattoos, some piercings, things like that. The minute we started shot, he ran away. You know, so like the eyewitness testimony is kind of kind of unclear. But he got his ass kicked essentially, uh, and he's been sort of recuperating, and that's why he's on leave right now. Uh, and it, to the point where he's he's probably going to have to undergo like reconstructive surgery. Um, so he's going to have to spend a lot of time uh, and kind of like rehab there for that. Uh, other things that you might be able to get. Um, in terms of just personality wise, Monty Croyo seems to have been a bit of a gold, like not a golden boy, but definitely was a, you know, part of the good old boy network, right? He's, he got along with everybody. No one really has a pretty bad word to say about him. Uh, solid, you know, kind of his arrest re- numbers and records were, were always, were always solid. Uh, but he, he always seemed to kind of play the business side of it, right? He always seemed to kind of be a guy that sort of schmoozed. And even when you like look at his retirement party and stuff, you're seeing like these well-known reps from these different companies here and there, like private security folks and stuff. You can tell that this is a guy who had like his eye like on the future. Uh, and then in terms of uh, the victim, uh, she... There's not a whole lot of uh, like she was a young officer. Uh, looks like looks like Hoyt and she kind of came up together in sort of the same class. Uh, and there's nothing necessarily about her that seems to sort of stand out to you. She was given like posthumously like a series of like these sort of valor medals and things 
uh, due to her her service and sort of preventing you know sort of terrorism uh, and such in, in LAPD. Uh, she does have she did have a family. Uh, it looks like, uh, but they uh, they're not in like LAPD or anything like that. She didn't have like a husband or children, but like she had like you know parents, uncles, that kind of thing. Uh, but that's probably all you would kind of piece together with one success. Did I find any sort of ties between Monty and Hoyt other than the, that they both worked the case? Uh, let's see. Uh, like you said, the, okay. Hoyt and Magi came up together. Did Monty come up with them too? No, Monty's much older than them. Uh, Monty's an older guy. Hoyt is probably like in his 40s. Monty was like, you know, this guy was pushing 70. Yeah, yeah. And then one thing does catch up, especially since you all are connecting, you would probably get this. Uh, he Hoyt was found, uh, he got his ass kicked in an alley uh, just a couple blocks away, like two blocks away from Happy Jack's Casino. So that's the one, one name that'll kind of like pop out uh, as you're like reading through the, the police report for, for Hoyt's uh, assault. And uh, one last question. Uh, what was the element that caused the radiation that was in the uh, white phosphorus explosion? Uranium. <laughs> Good. Good to know. No, wait, uh, no, where wait, would that, that be found in the explosion? Kipling? No, it was. Or that was wait. tainted in the explosion. Yeah, is uranium. Yeah. Uh, specifically, which isotope? Uh, you did not roll enough successes to oh, get damn, the isotope. Damn. I, I rolled again, so I was just, just checking. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, no good. Okay, uh, Arlie, are you doing anything? Uh, I want to see, because um, we also had like the, um, the, sorry, the, I'm trying to look through my notes. The Nexus H was only known by um, a particular candle. And so I want to see if I Bit can fiend. find a cross-reference to Bitfiend. Uh, okay. Uh, like in terms of, of, uh, like what they, they did or something like that. Yeah. Just, yeah. uh, whatever that kind of search would look like just to see what, uh, uh, okay. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, you get, I would say you would be able to get access to like a, like a, like a, like their sheet uh, of, of crimes that they were kind of connected to. Uh, they do appear to have been connected to the replicant underground, uh, they have like a variety of uh, uh, what looks like domestic terror uh, attacks and things like that. Nothing that necessarily like sparks fly when you look at it. You're like, oh, that's definitely like nothing really kind of stands out. It's just like this long sheet. Uh, but there's so that's why I'm not requiring a roll. It's pretty, pretty standard lengthy list. Um, violence instability, uh, kind of hiding, impersonating a human, uh, and then like various, like various, what they've categorized as like sort of terrorist behavior. And I will, I kind of imagine, um, cause I, I didn't necessarily find as much, so I'm going to kind of be behind, uh, Mr. Stone, um, kind of, reviewing the summary of what he's found just mm -hmm. to clarify how point a connects to point b connects to point c and just kind of very like, annoyingly just i can hear you breathing do you have to be that close well, yes i, I just I, I want to make sure that that any possible connection between all of our pieces of evidence is uh very clearly established and that everyone is aware but you don't even need to breathe why can i hear you breathing well it, it is, you know, something that that uh, I do in, in order to fit in. I, I I can I can speak words without breathing, I suppose. And like you'll you'll kind of get a, a change in cadence of like a, a word, and then like a silent inhale, and then like another word. But she's continuing to review all of the information that you're getting, and just sort of. So this happened before this, and then these two were here, and I think you said that this, and then we had the tattoo, and then. We should really, yes. I think we're I think we're getting some good information here. Good, good searching. I want to clarify? 
uh, I'm pretty sure replicants actually do breathe. They are, they are like they're hu- they're basically bioengineered humans, and so they have all the right. functioning stuff. So I, I actually I was just trying to give her shit. I, I wasn't actually trying to say that's canon. Okay. <laughs> Which is why then Arlie was just silently inhaling because <laughs> it's sort of still there. But I wasn't entirely sure. So I was just sort of like rolling with that. So she's being Pretty the sure. annoying. I am helping. And yes, making all the connections together and like sending out the uh, messages over like the Kia to Everett and Koji and Faye, just kind of keeping them up to date. And so it's instead of that, like, instead of sending all the information in one message, just putting a little bit in one message and then a little bit in another message and then a little bit in the next message. And so you're <laughs> keep getting the uh, oh my alerts. Gosh. You're the type of person who, when you send a message on Discord, you write four <laughs> words, hit enter, then write another five words, hit enter, and then write three. Instead of just writing a big paragraph and sending it one time. Yeah. You're so like kind of Faye is in this like, you know, kind of, you know, like, eye to eye, you know, kind of stand off with like the tattoo woman. <laughs> just keep getting like buzz and or buzz, buzz. So we will, we will go ahead then and cut back to Faye. Ashley, you've had some time to think. What do you want to do? Uh, look, I don't want to interrupt your day any further than I'm going to have to, but I can tell that you seem to know something. So if you don't want to tell it to me, you can tell it to me here or you can tell it to me, you know, at my office, at headquarters. Okay. Ah, uh, she's kind of like looks a little taken aback by your sudden aggression. Everything was kind of going relatively smooth. Uh, you guys were being so polite at that point. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because like face thing is she's not great at speaking with people. So mm-hmm. she's got a threshold, and then once she hits that point, she's just like, fuck it. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, you can roll a manipulation test, but I'll tell you that you can take your strength-based die, as it's like an... In, like, this is imita- intimidation. Uh, so take your take your manipulation, which is a C, and then you can take your and strength die D8. as opposed okay. to your, your empathy, because this is more about just you kind of flexing your strength and okay okay two sixes okay two successes perfect okay very nice um all right <laughs> she flexes her bicep okay uh and so she that will not be necessary what is it you would like to know i need a name of this person as she points so, again at the person with tattoos. Okay. So she looks okay. So you have like this kind of still photo of the fire suppressant area, like where, yeah. okay. And she kind of looks, I suppose she kind of scoffs a bit. This is not my work. Ugh, goodness. But I recognize it. I did work on this individual, but it wasn't these. It was something else. Mm. His name is Ty Walters. Not quite sure where he got enough chinyan to afford my shop. I deal with far more illustrious clientele. But nonetheless, he came here looking for a particular piece. Piece I did many years ago, in fact. And so she's, at this point, very gracefully moves across like that that tile floor and she goes up to the wall Mm -hmm. and she kind of just sort of taps on the wall and you see this display pop up and she starts kind of like swiping through it and swiping through it. And then she like hits it again and you see an image pop up. And it's wake up. This is tattoo. Like wake up. He wanted one of these. I have only given this out a few times. Certain conditions. And he requested it by name. And so, as a paying customer, 
He paid more than I would normally charge. You know, the eye blinks. It's not easy to do this. Most is just a still eye, open or closed. Mm. Is that all you wanted to know? Um, would I... What's the correlation of the people who receive these tattoos? She sort of, her eyes just kind of go up in her head. I'm not an investigator. I don't know the correlation. In fact, those who I've given it to have been strangely disparate. The woman that you saw in the photo, you tracked me down, Portia Keone. She was one, but she is not the type who would be rubbing elbows with Mr. Mr. Walters here. Mm-hmm. She lives on the 300th floor. And I'm sure he, if there is a floor beneath the street, perhaps that is where he lives. Then many years ago, I gave one to a, oh, to a, uh, a trash barge worker. So I scavenged out into Kipler and managed to, to Kipple and managed to actually bring an item I needed to repair. And she kind of like motions back. One of my antique tattoo needles. And then, oh, much more recently, in fact, there was a fellow. Oh, what was his name? What was his name? And she starts kind of going through her files. Oh, yes, here it is. And she turns like, and she she turns away so you can kind of see the screen that she's uh, she's got up on the the wall. Yes, yeah. Warwick Foxwell. And we will go ahead and end there for tonight. As yeah. Faye, you recognize the name <laughs> of your dear friend. Oh, Boxwell no. related to Maxwell? No. <laughs> no. Everett, do you have an you alias? You found my pseudonym. <laughs> <laughs> we got so much information. Lots of names drop. Lots of lots of suspects. Oh That's my so god! Funny. Detective work makes me realize how bad my notes are. Right? <laughs> right? You guys are taking I notes. Have to, like go through the episode and <laughs> just like only rewrite stuff. We had a video and audio record of this <laughs> that we could. That's what through. I rely on. You know I'm that like, the summary that Jeff so kindly writes. I'm gonna buy a whiteboard. <laughs> And just stand up and stream and look, draw on my whiteboard and make like a web. It's the, the bottom Pepe of my Silva piece of paper. Meme. That's what it is. It's yeah, like Pepe Pepe Silva. Silva. Oh, he goodness. has a whiteboard. I'm tempted to take it and just have some too, psycho actually. notes. I have one too. I have a really big one I used to hang up on the wall. I don't anymore, but I have a really big one somewhere. Uh, okay. Uh, so I guess that's it for us for tonight. Uh, we, uh, what do we got going on? Uh, so tomorrow you can come back, hang out with us uh, in the mm-hmm. afternoon as we're playing some One Ring Second Edition. We'll get back to that. Uh, so come hang out with us. Uh, I think everyone but Derek is in the is in the One Ring game. Uh, Monday we will be doing some horror on the Orient Express uh, as we get back to Call of Cthulhu for our episode two. Melissa and I are in that I'm game. So excited for that! And then Stephen, go ahead. What's going hey. on, on Tuesday, man? I am so excited. Uh, session one of Forbidden Lands, Beneath the Ash and Snow. We're doing a giveaway of some pretty real gold dice. I I can't say 100% real, but I they're 100% real in my heart. They're real. The dice, and, and we don't gold. know they're not 100% real. 100% real. Don't eat <laughs> Real gold. <laughs> I don't know about Go that, ahead and eat them. I'm otherwise. sure they taste amazing. <laughs> no. No. Um, but yeah, session one, I'm very excited for it. Uh, Jeff will be there. Melissa will be there. Uh, Aaron will be there. And uh, new to our channel, Kipser will be there. We already made characters. So go watch session zero. It's up on the YouTube. And then come back on Tuesday. Very excited. You did. The, it's up you on the, the YouTube, new. kids. I love that. The, the I like doing that intentionally. It's fun. <laughs> and I like to pluralize it. The YouTubes. 
That's fine. <laughs> Just to you. check, is it pound sign YouTube? Shut Just up. To... <laughs> Shut up. It is like pound sign, like, damn it. You're the same age as me. Shut up. <laughs> I know. It's totally a pound sign. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see what else we got going on uh and then next friday so um, again blade runner is a every other week game uh it shares time uh, but we're also very excited so we're starting another new we're starting two new games next week in addition to uh to steven's wonderful forbidden lands game we're also going to be starting up uh conan uh so we're doing conan uh 2d20 system from uh from odiphius i know they lost the license and everything but we're they still the game so we're playing that game uh aaron who has been mentioned we saw him in the hunter game and stuff like that and if you watch uh our, our octon cthulhu game over on garblag he's going to be running some conan for us uh so we're going to be making characters session zero uh and uh it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, so come hang out with us and uh, that's what we got going on uh, so thank you to everyone who hung out tonight. Thank you to all of you who participated in the giveaway. Congratulations to Gorilla to Hunt Eddie. I'll hit you up on uh, on Discord to get your info, and uh, we'll figure out how to get you the dice. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and raid our buddies over at Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, Joe is running them through Heart, one of uh, my favorite games. Uh, City Beneath from, uh, was it Rowan, Rook, and Deckard? Or Rook, Rowan. I always get it, get it out, of, out of order, but wonderful game. So follow the raid. Go say hi to them, and we'll catch you next time. So bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.